from Nelson Stadium in the capital city of Helena, this is college football on SWX. This afternoon, the Fighting Saints of Carroll College welcome in the 14th ranked Batland Bears of Rocky. Hi again, everyone. I'm Chris Byers along with Bobby Beers and Austin Carr. And folks, fall has arrived across the state of Montana. The rain is falling. It's a very cool Saturday afternoon, but what should be a fantastic game between two great programs. And Bobby, let's start with Rocky Mountain College and really, it is defense by committee. They bring it and bring it hard. This team plays well together. They get great pressure up front. Their linebackers run really well. And when that ball's in the air, they got ball ha ball hawks on the back end of that defense. They lead the or lead, they lead the conference in uh, interceptions with 10 this year, but they bring pressure all day long, Chris. Both defenses very strong. And Austin, when we look at Carroll College as a team, again, much like Rocky, I mean, they're good across the board. This game is hugely important for them. Yeah, if they want to make the playoffs and and uh, make a conference, uh, excuse me, NAIA title run, this is a big win for them. And, and speaking of that defense, Jack Perka, if he's going to move the ball today, he's got to locate Kaysen Barnett of that Rocky defense. He leads that team with four interceptions. And uh, Duncan Craft, Matt Burgess, going to be heavily relied on in the rain today. Yeah, you look at the standings in the Frontier Conference. The College of Idaho leads. They are in the top ten in the country. They're undefeated. Rocky just a game back at 5-1. and one. And here's Carroll College at 4-2. and two. And Austin, as you so aptly noted, they have to win to stay in the conference uh, uh, stay in the conference chase. They're just outside the top 25 at 26 looking in. Very important game. Yeah, this is a, this is a must win. Like we said, and another key fact for Carroll is going to be that defensive line against quarterback George Tribble. Can they get pressure and can they get some sacks against one of the better ranked offenses in the uh, Frontier Conference. All right, we got a good one for you in Helena. Buckle in, stay tuned. Kickoff is next between Carroll and Rocky. And welcome back to Nelson Stadium here in Helena as we are set to go in this Frontier Conference matchup. It's Rocky and the Fighting Saints from Carroll County. They like for you to say Fighting Saints, Bobby, not the Saints, but and they are going to have to come out and establish it and establish it early against a very good Rocky Mountain College team. And we talked about it in the open. They're four and two, no room for air now, 26th in the country. And with the College of Idaho leading at six and oh, you got to win at home and then try to run the table to close out. Yeah, that end of the season push is here. 
Carroll doesn't have much of a margin for error. They're trying to get into that top 25, and it's competitive. The Frontier Conference is nationally recognized as one of those top-tier NAIA conferences where we're going to get at least one in, but that battle for that second spot, and every once in a while there's a third team that kicks in there. But we, they got to take care of business at home, and facing them is the second-place team. They need that spot, Chris. Well, that's right, and, of course, Rocky stubbed their toe against the College of Idaho. Very winnable game at Herb Clint Field earlier in the season. They wound up losing 20 to 18. So College of Idaho at 6-0 definitely in the driver's seat. But for Rocky Mountain College, you, you got to take care of business as well because once you get the automatic bid in the frontier, then it's going to go to the polls. And right now, Rocky sits 14th in the country. 16 teams get in, so a loss here could drop you below that number. So very important game for Rocky as well. And, of course, they still have their eyes on a Frontier Conference championship as we look to the keys to the game in this one between the two. And I think defense carries the day uh, for both of these squads. Uh, they put up some great numbers. Well, you mentioned it in the opening about the – about the weather. Uh, both these teams rely so much on different aspects of defense. Rocky's defense, you know, they need to pressure up front. We saw it on the screen there. Both D-lines have to play well and dictate that the, their type of ball on, their, on that side of the scrimmage. So we're going to see who's going to play more physical up front, and that's going to play a key role in today's outcome. Well, obviously, weather uh, could be a factor for both teams, at least in the passing offense. And, you know, two quarterbacks, you hate to use the term, it's overused to just manage the game and, and uh, don't make mistakes. But really, in reality, both these quarterbacks, statistically not among the best in the, in, in the Frontier Conference, but both have done a good job of running their team's offense. Well, Perka for Carroll has done a nice job at managing uh, not only the, the external expectations, but the game within the game on the field. He distributes the ball well. It's a very balanced attack. They rely on the running game and then him in the play action game. Great athlete back there. But again, he facilitates this office so offense so well. He has five touchdowns on the season, five inter interceptions. So he's got to get that balance a little more on the, the touchdown side. On Rocky's half, George Tribble's taking the helm from Nathan Dick. We don't know what the situation is with him, if we're going to see him later on in the year or not. But he's done, it's a different type of offense where he does get the ball out into the uh, playmaker's hands a little bit more effectively than Nathan Dick did. But it's a different type of offense. Rockies, you know, adjusted pretty well, but they're going to get tested today. Well, Tribble, as you said, filling in for Nathan Dick. He's the redshirt junior out of Las Vegas. Uh, Nathan Dick continues to be listed as week to week. He was the starter, but Tribble's come in and done a very good job for, for Rocky, maintaining the offense, being consistent. Uh, they've relied on their defense to win games this year, and both are really stout against the run. And, and for Tribble and Perka, they could be the key in this game to see which one gets the passing game going. Well, these two quarterbacks, are, it's trial by fire today, isn't it? Big game right here. This means a lot. And so we're going to see, you know, uh, Tribble, the backup quarterback heading into the season, didn't necessarily uh, anticipate being in a big game like this. Nonetheless, the table set for him to play a huge role in this one. And Perka, this is the type of games that quarterbacks at Carroll come to Carroll to play for. Very difficult to come in and win here at Nelson Stadium. And Rocky will certainly be looking to do that. Carroll College will receive to start the game. Yeah, I think the weather here, we were down on the field earlier. It is, it's been raining pretty steadily all day. That, you know, you don't know what, you can't anticipate what effect the weather is going to have here. But, uh, you know, Rocky's defense, the pressure that they get up front, you know, it forces some quick throws and whatnot, and you hope that that footing in the secondary doesn't play a big role. But uh, natural grass right here in Nelson Stadium. Rocky plays on turf, practices on turf, so uh, a little bit of a change for them there. That's a big adjustment, even as a, you know, it's, it's only a three-and-a-half-hour drive, right? This morning, that's what you made it in? <laughs> Just about. That's right. <laughs> Wyatt Brusfin puts a foot into it, and this game is underway. This will be fielded by Stoddard. Brings it up over the... 20, got some room to the 30, still on his feet and ridden out of bounds at the 35-yard line. But a great start for Carroll College on the run back by Colin Stoddard. Yeah, he had a little bit of an opening. Could have, might have been able to take it the whole way, but he ran into his own guy block in there. Not, but, you know, thank goodness for Rocky. They had Dylan Deans in there, DB from Billings, Montana, able to make that possibly touchdown saving tackle. But nonetheless, Carroll's got great initial field position out here at the 35. First down, just underway, first quarter. 
Burka operates out of the gun. They stay on the ground, slips and falls. We may see a little more of that today. Are you live? Yeah, that misdirection run where you're trying to put that, you, you can't cut off the inside foot on a sloppy field. And you see right there is Matt Burgess grabs the ball and tries to get off that, make that cut on this inside foot and slips down. As you're, as you're making or, uh, changes of direction in this, you got to have a little bit more balance. Can't carry as much speed into those cuts. And right there, Burgess doesn't lose any yardage. Brings up second and 10 for Carroll. Second down for the Saints. Perka, straight drop, looks across the middle, and that is dropped by Burgess, who was wide open at the 43-yard line, third and 10. Yeah, good job by Perka going through his reads, just hit the check down route. Unfortunately, a little too hot to handle for Burgess, so third and long here after a great initial, you know, a great return for Carroll and sets him up pretty decent, but third and long nonetheless. Burgess, their leading ball carrier, 292 coming in, 5.2 yards per carry. And here we go, third down from the 35. Perka looks, now fires out in the left flat, and that is, for a moment, caught and dropped. Well, Braille Lipford playing from a safety spot there. Rocky drops into the zone. Uh, did a great job with the linebacker. I think that was Nolan McCaffrey right there, able to get underneath that route. And then you had uh, Lipford come in and, and break it up at the end there. But Rocky defense showing that it can run to the ball no matter what the field conditions on the first possession. So it's a three and out for the Saints on their opening drive, forced to punt here. And the Bears, John Butler. Back, very short kick, will hit at the 40. Bounces down to the 34, so Rocky Mountain College with good field position for their initial drive. Yeah, Carroll came out, guns a-blazing, and they had the good kickoff return and then just kind of stumbled right there and then kind of a, a side-of-the-foot punt there. So Carroll came out hot initially and then cooled off rapidly, and Rocky's defense rang, in the, rang the bell and, and answered early. Now their offense has to come up here. George Tribble, possibly, this is the biggest game he's had at Rocky. They kind of had, you know, they had uh, Eastern Oregon and uh, MSU Northern to start at this little different caliber of team here in this Carroll defense. Tribble has Zaire Wilcox in the backfield with him, four receiver set. They bring Simon across, now pressure. And Tribble throws it out of bounds, nearly sacked for a big loss. Avoids that, second down. Yeah, Tribble's a big kid now. You, you see uh, you see him sliding around. You know, you hear in your ear right now that we, we get, uh, you know, there's some comparisons to a guy that plays on Sunday by the name of Mahomes, but Tribble right there slipping out of guy's hands and able to do the smart thing and getting rid of it downfield uh, gives this Rocky offense a chance in second down rather than the sack. Good pressure by that front four of Carroll College. Second and ten. This time they'll stay on the ground. Wilcox tries the left side, got a little bit of running room out to the 39, so gain of five, third and five. Now you see the difference there. Wilcox able to, he's low, runs with good pad level, low to the ground there, able to stick that left foot in the ground and get north and south. Runs behind his pads a little bit, didn't lose his feet, and was brought down by a good tackle by that Carroll defense. Wilcox, 511 yards coming in, averages 85 a game. 4.5 yards per carry. He's been a real workhorse, Bobby, for this Rocky Mountain College rushing offense. Ball sits on the 39, third and five. Just underway, first quarter. No score, opening possession for the Bears. Tribble, quick drop, fires out here for Andrew Simon. Passes behind him, incomplete, so both teams struggling on offense to start. And that'll bring up fourth down. Yep. Bears forced to punt it away after getting the ball with good field position. Yeah, three and outs by both these offenses. We talked a lot about the, the influence that the weather's going to have. We've seen good defensive play by both sides of the ball. And we've seen the uh, weather have play a role both times. Or Simon, we're going to hear a lot from that individual today. Big target. Uh, you know, he's going he's to have a good game for George Tribble to be successful today. Cameron Rothy stands at his 25. And now Brosvin, a little running kick. Gets it away in a great bounce. Rothy will field it inside the 20. Up to the 25 and taken out of bounds. So when we come back, Carroll College with the ball for the second time. Scoreless game here in the first quarter.
Today's Frontier College football game on SWX is brought to you by, in part by Carroll College. Carroll College, not for school, but for life. Second possession for the Saints of Carroll here from the 25 first town. Rain continues to fall here. And no gain on the play once again. That's Ethan Hurst knifing in from his defensive end spot. Able to get in that backfield. We talked about the pressure of these defensive fronts. Both sides have uh, rely heavily on that pressure. And right there, Ethan Hurst getting into the backfield for dropping the uh, Carroll ball carrier for no gain on first down. This Rocky defense yielding just 13.8 points per game. Total offense holding teams under 300. So second and 10. A little play action. They flip it out there in the flat. That is caught for a short gain. Chris Ackleson with the catch. Yeah, and Ackleson kind of the security blanket for Perka on that side. But, you know, that play action plays a huge role. And Carroll's got to get something going in the running game. So, so this Rocky defense respects that as something that they that could go for big yardage. But they're right now, uh, that play action pass and most definitely the, the accuracy of Perka is, is key there. Ackleton, the redshirt freshman from Gig Harbor, Washington. Gain is seven, so third and three. They stay on the ground. No, they come up top, and this one is batted down, incomplete, and fourth down coming. Yeah, that's Nolan McCaffrey again making a big play on third down for this Battling Bear defense. Jumps in there from his linebacker spot, sees where Perk is trying to go with it, just jumps up and knocks it down, brings up another fourth down for Carroll. McCafferty, the team leader on the Rocky defense with 37 tackles, five tackles for loss. That's tops on this team and a nice play there. John Butler back to receive on fourth down. Pressure up the middle, kick is away, angling away from Barnett and out of bounds. Once again, Rocky will have great field position when they begin their second drive in the afternoon. 11.33 to play first quarter. No score from Nelson Stadium. Second possession of the game for Rocky Mountain College so far. Defense has carried the day. Neither team able to move the football here early in the first quarter. Bears from the 37, first down. Pressure up the middle by that Carroll defense. Wilcox finds a little room, picks up a couple, give them two, second and eight. Well, let's go down and join the third member of our broadcast team this afternoon and say hello to Austin Parr. Hi, Austin. Yeah, it's uh, a light rain turned into a, a little bit of a heavier rain down here. Field conditions are making it tough for both offenses so far, but that doesn't uh, take away from the great defensive play so far from both teams, but the weather has been a factor. 
the weather has been a factor so far, and we've already seen the quarterback drop the ball. A couple of receivers fall down, so we'll keep an eye on that going into the second quarter. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Austin. That pass is caught by De Niro Killian Jr., the sophomore from Oakland, California, and that's going to be enough for the first down. The gain is up to midfield, Killian so the Bears. Did, he did a nice job catching the ball outside his outside of his body and then turning it upfield quickly. There's not going to be a lot of make you miss action here, folks. Killian does a nice job getting the first down for, for everybody. That's the first first down of the game, Chris. In Saints territory from the 48. First down. And a little slant pattern is caught. And a nice game. They go right back to Killian Jr. again to the 35 of the first down for the Batland Bears. Yeah, quick, decisive cuts. And Killian, he's a master of that right now. Quick, decisive, and then gets north and south after the catch. So Batland Bears find a little success in those short little quick slot passes to Killian. So back-to-back -back first downs for Rocky as the offense starting to move early in this game in Saints territory. And they'll stay on the ground. Wilcox pushing the pile forward. Looked like there wasn't anything there, but he picks up four. So second and six, the gain is to the 31. Yeah, offensive line got good push that time. A good read by uh, Dribble there on the give. And good Good success in the running game helps everybody out if you're on offense on both on both teams. But right there, Tribble making a good read and good gain on first down. Tribble 126 yards a game through the air, hitting on 61% of his passes. He has been efficient. Second and six after the four-yard gain. And this time, Tribble on the quarterback keeper close to the first down. He'll be a yard short. I'll make it two yards short. And that'll bring up third and two from the 27. We talked about the differences in the quarterbacks at Rocky. Nathan Dick able to create with his legs and would create for himself to try to make plays. Tribble a little different, creates with his feet to throw there on the pull read. He gets a couple of yards and brings up third manageable. Ball at the 27 on third and two, under nine minutes to play here, first quarter. Two receivers, bottom of the screen. Now they bring the tight end, Simon, across. And this is going to be close to the first down. Looks like he'll be marked a yard short. Well, second effort, they're going to spot it at the 25, and that may be enough for the first down. Well, we're going to see what happens here. No official signal yet. They haven't moved the chains. Now there, there it goes. The white hat gives the signal, and that's the one we're looking for. So able to make the push, push the pile, a little rugby scrum there to get the first down for this rocky offensive line. Everybody aboard and moving the chains. Yeah, ever since they changed that rule where you can push the pile forward, you see a lot of that anymore in college football. And he was stopped short, but got a nice push from behind and got just enough to the 25 of the first down. Looks like a beginning soccer deal where everybody yeah. goes there and they bunch up like grapes and push the pile and run around <laughs> and wait for the ball to squirt out. But in this case, we just push the little guy in the middle as far as we can go. <laughs> Three receivers to the bottom of the screen on first down. Tribble looks left, still looking, now brings it down, throws underneath to his check down. Incomplete pass to Killian. He was looking into the end zone, nothing there. Good coverage by that Saints secondary. Tried to check it down. And incomplete pass to Killian Jr. Yeah, Second down. Great job by the Carroll secondary. Really good job by the offensive line, not allowing that the, the pressure from the defensive line of Carroll to get there. But Tribble started, he felt that clock go off in his head and was just looking for somebody to check it down to. Nonetheless, lived to see another play, second down here for Rocky. Saints defense giving up just 17 points a game. Wilcox tries to bounce out of trouble and he is ridden down on a great tackle by Trey Johnson, the defensive line. Yeah, great job right there for, from Garrett uh, Kokab there. He does a great job using his hands to defeat the block at the point of attack. I thought he got, he's sitting there arguing that that's for a, a, a loss on the play, but uh, they're going to give the runner to the line of scrimmage. But the defensive line, Carroll, has to have some success 
if they're going if this defense is going to hold up right here. Yeah, that was Garrett Kocab on the tackle. My mistake there, but a nice open field tackle. So third and ten for the Bears from the 25. Tribble looks, feels pressure, and he's going to be taken down for a huge loss all the way back to the 40-yard line. Yeah, it was Kocab again coming around from his nose tackle spot. Had a couple of buddies. Tucker Jones was there to help him right there at the end. But if you're a quarterback, you went from having good field position and in, in almost a gimme range or at least attempt range, you backed yourself all the way out into dangerous territory here on a sloppy field. Kocab with great numbers coming in. The leading tackler on this Fighting Saints team, 34 tackles, couple of sacks, three and a half tackles for loss, and a big one there. That's saying something from that nose tackle spot, Chris. He's an active human right up front. Well, that's going to force a punt now from Brusvin, who stands at his 50-yard line. Rothy back at his 10. Brusvin will get it away. Angles for the corner. And let's see where they mark it out of bounds. Ah, that's a great kick. All the way down to the three-yard line. So Brusvin pins the Saints deep. And, boy, that's where your kicker can really help you. The redshirt junior from Shelby. That's one of those lost arts. So we don't ever see the corner kick anymore. Everybody wants to sky it up, turn the nose down, try to, you know, back it up like you do with your golf game now that you're semi-retired. <laughs> but that guy angle kicks right out of bounds right there, kicks it into the corner. You know, out of Shelby, you know, just polishing off some old football terminology. You know, the, the, the corner kick does a great job. Very effective for that Rocky special teams unit. So first down. And Duncan Kraft has got some running room, and he gets a first down all the way out over the 15-yard line. Well, we brought in the visiting team from Billings and leave it to leave it to an old Billings Central guy to yeah. make this this uh, game mean a little bit more. So Duncan Kraft, the Central product, showing the uh, his old hometown team a little something or nothing, trying to get this Carroll offense away from its own end zone. And of course, assistant coach for the Saints, Jim Hogan, coached yep. at Billings Central back in the day, many, many, many years ago. Yeah, Hogie's his hands weighted down by all those championship rings he won <laughs> here in his previous stint. That's right. Also coaches at Helena Capital. And this one is aired out and incomplete. Good job by the Rocky defense again. That one was kind of thrown up for grabs right there. That's all the way, that's Gabriel Bryant playing DB right there. It says he's 180, but he's got a couple of layers on today. But that ball was thrown up, kind of up for grabs, and Bryant showed a little gamesmanship playing, uh, trying to jump a little bit late for that. Looked like he was beat initially, but uh, came back in to make the play. I feel like I'm Tried to make a big play here. On second down, this time the little slant to Rothy who makes the catch. He's up over the 30 and another first down for Carroll College. Well, Perkett does a great job with the play action right there, holding the linebacker. And then Rothy able to come right in behind him, catches the slant, and then immediately great job by that young man. Getting north and south, Hamilton, Montana product right there. He's played on some sloppy fields down the Bitterroot Valley, Chris. Well, he's played on some pretty good high school teams back in the day with Hamilton. And That's, yeah, that he has. They got another good team this year. Yeah, the defending state champion, Hamilton Bronx. Brothy knows a thing or two about winning. And here we go on first down. Kraft, short gain, picks up two, second and eight. Well, Rothy was on that Montana All-Star team in the last Badlands Bowl that was played against North Dakota before they suspended the series, and I got a chance to watch him as a senior in that game, and uh, he's got all kinds of skills. If he could do so much for you, you see him running back punts and, and playing wide receiver. He's just a good athlete. Yeah, that versatility plays well into, you know, being able to plug him in in, in need places, and right there, right now for this Carroll offense in the slot is where he's needed. Came up with a big play earlier in this drive. Second and eight after the two-yard pickup. Perka got a man wide open, caught at the 40-yard line. And a beautiful catch by the tight end, Tony Collins. Tony Collins is such a big piece of this Carroll offense, and he gets open right down the seam. His defender fell down, and he goes and makes the adjustment and makes a huge catch. Big off biggest offensive play right now for this Carroll College football team. 
moves the stick, gets into battle in Bear territory. Tony Collins playing a huge role right there for this Carroll College Fighting Saints offense. 6'4", 230-pound senior out of Fort Worth, Texas. Wide open, down the seam, first and 10 from the 40. In Rocky territory for the first time today. Kraft right side, nothing doing. Brought down by a couple of Rocky players. Yeah, Cade Reynolds in on the stop. Cade Reynolds filling in right behind there. Sees the pullers coming down. Everybody makes the adjustment, waits for the back, and tackles him for a three-yard gain. But, you know, we talk, talk about this in, in, in football. Those early three-yard gains, if you can maintain that offensive momentum, those three-yard gains as we get into the third and fourth quarters, those start more breaking into five- and seven-yard chunks. So we'll, this Carroll offense making an investment in the run game early. Rothy and Jaden Harrison split left. He looks that way, Perka fires, and incomplete. And again, that rocky secondary, you talked about it. That's uh, Lipford out there. He had a great break on the ball. He was waiting for it. I, he, he was in better position at one point in time. It's a good thing that the wide receiver was there to get in his way because he was he was off to the races. He, he, wouldn't, he could have been to Townsend by now. All right, so incomplete pass. Brings up third and seven. Ball at the 37. Perka looks left. Now fires across the middle. And that is caught, but short of the first down. And a nice catch, but Ockelchen is short of the first. It's fourth down and decision time now for the Saints. Well, that's a good decision by Perka on second or third down there. He's got to move the sticks, and he checked it to his. He looked front side, didn't like it, checked it to the under in these sloppy conditions. It's hard to get up ahead of speed and then change direction. So the unders on a sloppy field are tough, but Perka right there, you know, got him in better position for this punt. Well, this drive started at their own three-yard line, got it to the 35 of Rocky, stalls there. Playing Pace that field position game. Barnett is back. And Carroll will try to pin the Bears deep. And this one is going to hit inside the 10. And wow, do they flip field position all the way down to the five-yard line. So the Saints return the favor on the punt. And well, Rocky will start from their own five. That's Spencer Berger, a Billings West product. And he does the nose down. We saw the effective corner kick over here, the old school back in my day type of thing. And then the new school, your type of day type of thing where he puts the nose down, puts the spin on it. And Spencer Berger bringing a little new school to the uh, Carroll special teams right there. Drops the ball right about the six yard line and that's where the Battle of Bears will take over. New school, old school, as long as it works, right? So down at the five yard line, first down, 2.15 to play first quarter in a scoreless game from Nelson Stadium. And Rocky will stay on the ground as Wilcox slides out, picks up a couple of tough yards, give him three, second and seven. Yeah, you saw Andrew Simon missing a block out there in space. Otherwise, that would have gone for a lot more. That, that's kind of a weird uh, area for your tight end because he wants to be an on-the-line, down-the-line type of blocker. And Simon, big body dude, he puts his hands on his defender right there. And we're talking about a much bigger gain. So Rocky now with second and six here deep in their own backed up in their own system. Ball's at the nine. And again, Wilcox got some room close to the first down and looks like he's gonna get it as they mark this one at the 17. And yep. that is indeed a first down. Well, both teams, Bobby, coming off a of bye week. The last time out for Carroll took down MSU Northern 47-3. The Bears taking out Eastern Oregon 28-6, both of those games on October the 8th. The last meeting between these two was last year, and it was a wild one at the Rocky Bowl October 23rd when Rocky came back and won at 39-34. That's Wilcox again. But you, you, you talk oh, fumble. About... Ball's on the oh, ground. No, they're calling him down. Okay. They're calling him down from the sideline right there. Well, I was talking to the Rocky staff. I saw him out walking around. They hadn't been here since 2019, since pre-pandemic. And so they were kind of excited walking around doing the tour. So there, there's a lot of uh, quick familiarization with this, with the field, with the facility, all that, with the guys wearing white. But those guys wearing purple right now, they're defending territory and not giving up much here. And Wilcox 
he's become such a big part of this offense since Nate Dick has gone down. Well, he sure has over 500 yards coming in. And the ball's at the 21, second and seven. Bears trying to grind out some yardage here deep in their own end. Tribble looks left, now throws to Simon who makes the catch at the 20. Cut down at the 21 yard line. Nice open field tackle. Hansen on that from a safety position comes up and cuts down the bigger tight end right there. That's not Hansen, that's a 18 over there, I'm sorry. That's Thomas McGree Thomas from Butte. Butte. Butte guy playing in the secondary at Carroll. So McGree cutting him down for a short gain from the tight end spot, but. It's gonna take us to the end of the first quarter. We played 15 minutes here at Nelson Stadium. We are scoreless between the 14th ranked Batland Bears of Rocky and the Fighting Saints from Carroll College. college football game on SWX is brought to you in part by Rocky Mountain College. Rocky Mountain College committed to excellence. Third and six for the Bears from the 22. Opening play of the second quarter. And that pass is caught by Simon who drags <laughs> tacklers over midfield all the way down to the 45 and a first down for Rocky. Well, I hope that they can replay this from the truck because you're going to see a lot of action here. You see Simon Pirouette grab the ball out of the air. You see a missed interception by a Carroll guy who couldn't believe that he did pluck it out of the air. And then he had the wherewithal to keep skipping down the field to get across midfield to set up Rocky in Carroll territory again. Simon. Almost got it, tipped it to himself, and then gets ridden down rodeo style, but not before he crossed the 50. Back to the ground to Wilcox, some tough yards. Picks up three, second and seven from the 42. Let's get down on the field and join Austin Parr. for Carroll College this week. And the biggest thing he said was we've got to finish. Four games left in the season. It all starts with this game right here. Finish, finish, finish. So far, no points on the board for Rocky. Rex and that defense has been doing a great job finishing on defense so far. Yeah, no question, Austin. Uh, both defenses playing extremely well in this game. Yards have been hard to come by. But the Bears, a nice little run pass mix here on this drive where Wilcox has gotten them out of a deep hole and then they find the big tight end. Andrew Simon, 23 catches coming into today's game. That leads the team nine yards per carry, but that will go up after that last catch. Yeah, 
you know, the, the investment in the run game by Rocky with Zaire Wilcox, that's going to pay off down the road in a, in a lot of areas, especially up front for defense uh, against this defensive line, but also in the passing game, opening up and down the field. As oh, third and three. And Tribble lost the ball, shoots it out of bounds. Wow, that's a tough break for Rocky. Tribble, not sure if he even anticipated the snap, but at any rate, he's able to scoop it up and throw it out of bounds. Yeah, doesn't compound things by going down or taking the sack. Had the head, he had the piece or the, the wherewithal where he was out on the field just to chuck it. Chuck it out of bounds right there. It gives him fourth down, and it looks like Coach Stutz over there on the Rocky sideline is, is, is going to push the envelope a little bit here. Well, both teams trying to get something going offensively, and ball is on the 38, so first big play of the game for the Saints defense on fourth and three, and now a timeout is taken. Going to talk it over, going to think about it here, Chris. Now both teams are content to punt the football. Uh, when they haven't been able to convert, but Rocky lining up. I take a look at uh, Coach Stutz Ream and the Bears. And for Carroll College on the other side, Troy Purcell now in his fourth season. Nine and six overall. And, uh, you know, Troy's got a lot of roots in Montana. You yes, know, back to his days as the head coach of the Haver Blue Ponies when they won a state championship in 2004. But more, more noted for those great teams he had in Bozeman. Well. Coach Purcell, we talk about, you know, they, they, they list his big players here, but Carroll's felt the effects of those big players. They, they won a couple of national championships with Gary Wagner, his quarterback at Haver, and then he put a couple of guys, well, you know, Mark Mariani. Yeah. He's got the Disley kid that's, uh, you know, he played here or it, 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 for him at, in Bozeman. There's a couple of guys. This guy knows football, and he's a Carroll College fighting saint. He cut his teeth right here on this campus playing football. Kind of a little different rise to where he is compared to Coach Stutzry, who maybe was a little more traditional coming through the ranks. But uh, Coach Purcell, outstanding high school coach for many years. And now they're going to go to the big tight end, and Simon is going to be taken down and stopped well short of the first down. And that was read beautifully. On the stop for the Saints is Tucker Jones, the linebacker. There's just a lot of pursuit. And that thing strung out as far as you can. You put it in the hand of a big body guy right there. And you had Jacob Resch right there as well. And, and so Carroll College tested on their side of the field, comes up big, change of downs, turnover on downs for that rocky offense. But Stutz taking a chance, live by the sword, die by the sword on that one, Chris. Yeah, that was just outstanding defense. And back to work comes the Saints. So you, just to finish up on Coach Purcell, I mean, he really exemplifies what Montana is like and, you know, with coaches that, that stay here and, and develop within the program and all those great players he's had. And he has uh, got something going here at Carroll. And really, and that ball, I believe, is going to be, do they give him the catch? Looked like it might have hit the ground. Well, they're going to give him the catch. They're signaling it on the sideline here. That was a great catch. The head catch. linesman. They're going to have a discussion here at the middle of the field. It looked like Ockelchin might have short hopped it, but there it is again. They're going to take it. They overruled it. The linesman came over. The head linesman made the signal. And Coach Purcell, not as composed as we might have described. Here's a good look from our angle. Do we see it? No. Yeah, good call. That is a right call by the officials. Wait, a good job by those guys to come together and make the right call rather than just assume and take people's words for it. Great job by the teamwork by the officiating crew, the third team on the field today. Incomplete pass, second and 10. Oof. And again, this Rocky defense coming yeah, up Yeah, Ethan big. Hurst right there. A little bit of a late, re late pull by Perka, and Hurst wasn't fooled by it at all. It met him right there, gives, drops him for about a yard, yard and a half loss, brings up third and 11. But you're talking about Coach Purcell. He played under one Coach Petrino, coached under another one, and now he takes the job, you know, at his alma mater. You know, just the the rites of passage and the and the, uh, the the pass traversed to this spot for him. You know, pretty rewarding the, some of the successes he's having right now. Yeah, spent a year at uh, University of Idaho, right, under Coach Petrino. Yep. 
in the Big Sky Conference. Parka got all kinds of time. Stands in there and finds Rothy. He's going to be just short of the first down. He gets it to midfield. And this is going to bring up fourth and two. Short of the sticks, that's one of those awareness things as a receiver, know where you're at on the field. But Perka had lots of time right there. He's begging to take it downfield. They want, Tony Collins wants to go for it on fourth down. He saw the other tight end get the reverse. That's what it is. He feels pressure to perform. You like that competitiveness out of the young man. But they're playing smart football here. They're going to, they know the sloppy field. We're going to punt the ball, do the smart thing. So Berger will punt it away, end over end kick, and this one is going to hit at the 10 inside the 5. And once again, the Saints special teams doing their job as Barnett is pinned deep. So Rocky with the football deep in the row end when we come back. It's scoreless, 11.29 to go, first half. Food for our SWX crew was provided locally today by the Breakfast Club in Helena. Breakfast burritos so big, you'll probably skip lunch. The Breakfast Club in Missoula and Helena. Rocky Mountain College back on offense again, deep in their own end. The ball is on the seven. And if you want to make a case for special teams, you can sure you point to today's game and do that. Well, Spencer Berger did a great job right there. Of course, he was a baseball player in, in Billings as well, but did a great job handling a, a, a snap that was over his head. And then both teams can't really you know, get anything consistent going. Had a couple of big third down plays, go for not, and then the fourth down turnover by Rocky. But some of the highlights you're seeing are, are by that uh, special teams crew by both sides. A return for Carroll to start the game, and then their punting's been kind of their highlight from there. But, and with Rocky, just almost a couple of near misses with blocks. But right now, defense and special teams are kind of the the, the keys right now to, to where we're at at a 0-0 score, partially way through the second quarter. Haven't seen anything from Trey Henry yet, the Bears' leading receiver. He's down at the bottom of the screen. First down. And the give is to Wilcox, who gets it up to the 10, call it the 11-yard line, so picks up four, second and six. Wilcox does a good job when it, you don't think there's much there, and he winds up getting three and four yards. Yeah, he squirts and jumps and, and, and hops forward. Well, it looks like, like you're saying, like a two-yard gain. He finds some sneaky, leaky yardage there at the end of runs, and pretty soon, you know, that pays off later on as things wear down and he's able to squirt through for bigger chunk yardage gains. And he'll go right back to it. Short gain again up to the 12-yard line. Just kind of turtled up yeah. right there, not for a lot of yardage. Not much there, so third down now. And the interior of that defense for the Saints. 
locking Wilcox down. Well, it's, it's all out there for both of these teams, really, as we head down the stretch drive for Rocky. After today, they've got MSU, Northern, and Haver, and then two huge home games against Montana Tech and Montana Western, both at home. So this one becomes critical, as we mentioned, for both these. Tribble is going to throw one out incomplete. No chance at all, as that was intended for Selgren. Ball yeah. overthrown, fourth down. Good coverage. Just this secondary for Carroll, very underrated. They play a lot of zone. They use their hands quite a bit right there, but you saw Zach Spiroff doing a great job in coverage downfield. Nothing there for this rocky offense. Brings up fourth down and yet another punt early here. They're kind of the stars of the show today, are the punters. The Saints should come away with great field position as Brusvin will stand in the end zone to punt this one away. Are you live? Rothy back at the right at midfield. Brosfin will kill. Oh, just hit it off the side of his foot. That's a terrible punt that goes out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Flag on the play. And we'll see what this is all about. The snap looked a little bit low. Punter had to dig it out of the dirt and then punted it off the side of his foot. So it'll be an interesting call right here. See what happens as the chain gang even thought we were going. A little bit of an adjustment there. Well, this is huge for both teams. The state Saints stand to get it. Okay, still so running into the down. kicker. Yep. yep. He's still just short of the first down, so they'll do catch a break there. But boy, the Saints poised to get it at the 30-yard line. Wow, just just one of those things where it, and the timing was off there. You can't really say somebody made a mental mistake because it took longer to get the ball off there. But it brings up fourth and you know, have they moved the have they Marked off the yardage yet, Chris? There's a little more discussion here by the officials over there on the sideline. And there's Coach Stutz entertaining a conversation by another official, trying to get out of it, keep him distracted while they get the business of walking it off. There we go. That's what Coach Stutz was doing over there. He was making sure, hey, we had five and a half yards, so five yards makes that a half yard first down there, yep. boys. So Rocky, a new set of downs by the uh, roughing the kicker, the running into the kicker, rather. New set of downs, changes, flips the script on this Carroll team. So a great job by Coach Stutzream to see that. And Rocky will keep the ball on offense. Good job by this officiating crew getting the call right. That's the second time they've come together, had a discussion, and got the call right. Even without instant replay, guys at this level know what the heck they're doing. Ball on the 17, Wilcox, it's good running there up to the 20 yard line. Pick up a three, second and seven. That yeah, took a long time for that one to get to the line of scrimmage. And you saw the lead blocker right there coming out of the end there, Simon again, trying to lead the way. But Wilcox able to get you know three yards on first down on, the, on a sloppy field. They're not, again, he's not making a lot of guys miss. And it's different because Rocky plays on uh, AstroTurf, fake grass, this is real grass here. It's a different running surface for him. A little bit of an adjustment. He's done nicely doing that today. Second down, under nine and a half to play here in the first half. Wilcox again, boy, not much there, maybe a yard. It's yep. going to be up third and long. There's a uh, there's some adjustment, little gamesmanship going on before that. that Carroll's bringing pressure from the field that time. Triple flips the script right there, and then Carroll does the same. Hey, you switch, switch the strength of your thing. We're going to bring pressure from that side. So great job by both uh, both coaches knowing what the adjustment is. And, you know, Rocky thought they had the answer. Carroll's defense bows their back a little bit and brings up third and long here. Both defenses playing lights out right now. Empty backfield now, five receivers for Rocky on third and seven. Tribble, across the middle, oh, and this one is almost intended for Simon as it was tipped and that brings up fourth down. Yeah, Tucker Jones, right place, right time. Just nobody there to capitalize on it. <laughs> he tipped the ball. And you know his his other linebacker buddy 
Bedke from Oakley, Idaho, just not able to control himself to get it. He goes sliding right by it. Oh, the things that could have been right there. But Tucker Jones, good read right there. Great job again by this Saints defense. So Brusfin again back to kick inside his 10, where he has spent a good part of this afternoon. Gets off a beautiful kick, and this one angling away from Rothy will let it hit all the way down inside the 30-yard line to the 29. So a good job of Brusfin to flip the field here. And the Saints, when we come back, will have it from the 29. Still scoreless, 8-11 to play, first half. Scoreless game here at Nelson Stadium as we get a look at Coach Chris Stutzreen. 17 and 14 overall as the coach for the Bears. I think that one's, I've got him at 12 and 13. At any rate, hired in 28 Rocky and interesting background. As hired as head coach, it was his second stint at Rocky. Two years prior, he was an assistant coach on the Bears staff and came back when that opened up. No, he's done a nice job there, building a little consistency in the program as we watch Northern McCaffrey make a play on the other side of the ball. But Stutz has done a nice job. He's fully invested in this thing. Like you said, second go around at Rocky. So he knew what he was getting into. He was the offensive coordinator. They had a lot of success there. And now he's parlayed that in. He's all in. He and his dad painted the offense, the offices up there. You know, he, he's made a huge investment in his life in Rocky Mountain College, and, and they're really pleased with some of the things he's doing up there. So a loss of two, second and 12 from the 27. And Perkowitz gets it up over the 30 to the 34 yard line. Gets a good chunk of that yardage back. It'll bring up third down, a little more manageable. Yeah, Perka does it. He, he is a good athlete. That's one of the things last year when he took over the helm here. That athleticism really kind of bled some new life into this offense. Right there, we're seeing those legs at work here. He's done a nice job, you know, moving the ball a little bit here. Brings up third and manageable for an offense that's really looking for something to uh, capitalize on. Sophomore from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Third and six. Perkins again, got all kinds of time. Has a wide open receiver, and this is going to be a big gainer down inside the 40-yard line. And That's by far the biggest gain of the day. Is Carson Ochoa right there. They're just run a little uh, swing hitch combo there on the on the back side. He, he read the front side, didn't like it, came back to his tight end and just runs it right down there. You see him catching the ball and running. Breaks a tackle, a couple of tackles right there. Rocky defenders, they're off balance. And Ochoa played another big play by the tight ends at Carroll College. Well, he'll stay on the ground at Burgess. Good gain to the 30, picks up five, second and five. Burgess showed a little vision right there, showed some patience, sees the front side get kind of shut, waits for everything to wash by and gets good yardage, four, four and a half right there on first down. 
So now this, this Carroll side capitalized on a strong run game, play action pass, and a little athleticism from their quarterback. Saints are rolling into rocky territory. Okay, they give them four on the call, second and six. And Burgess just running over tacklers, and he's got himself a first down to the 21-yard line. Good balance by the young man right there. Kept it front side on the wide zone. All the way out there, hit the seam on the edge, up the field, breaks a tackle right there. Keep your head up, keep your head up. Burgess ran right through that one, fell forward, moved the chains, and the Carroll College fighting Saints, fighting their way in, trying to fight their way into the red zone. Down to the 21. 5.30 to play, first half, Perka. And they go right to Burgess who slams up the, in there just inside the 20 yard line, pick up a two, second and eight. Like Rocky's offensive run game right now, just you know, a couple of yards here, a couple of yards there, and then every once in a while these running backs, they're able to break that tackle and author into the secondary. Right here, the investment on first down in, in you know, just two yards. We just say two yards, but down the road, that could, that could produce bigger and bigger gains. Second down, Perka right across the middle. And again, nice catch out there by Ochoa. Yeah, he just sat down right over the top of the ball. They, they just ran a couple of you know, hitch routes right there and, and Perka reading through it. Great job on second down, that third and short. Ochoa breaks the tackle like he did earlier. We're a lot closer, we're moving the chains, we're, we're goal to go, but Ochoa right there knew where he was, worked himself open, and Perka re doing a good job with a little bit of time. This Carroll offensive line starting to dictate terms their way now. Good looking drive here for the Saints late in the second quarter. Jaden Harrison in the slot, Burgess with the call, slides it, gets one tackle, now takes it inside the 10, and that's gonna set up first and goal from the eight yard line. Well, Burgess kept his, his feet long enough to where the, the Rocky defender comes in. And I don't know if that was Garcia. I didn't get a good look at the number right there. But it's, as he goes to get tackled, the defender takes him and picks him up and, and, and drives him into the ground after the yard marker. So we got goal to go for this Carroll offense. Deepest drive by either team today. First and goal from the eight. Now they're going to shift to the right side. Perka. And they'll run the other way. And Burgess this time has met right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Second down for the eight. Yeah, that rocky pursuit on that time. That, that double tight end set, whether they're on either side, same side or opposite side. Right now, they've had some success right there. We watch Wesley Moei right there run him down from his defensive tackle spot. You know, they put Collins and Ochoa, stacked them to the right side, and then ran, ran back the other way. But a good job by the Bears' defense on second down. Those two big targets are a quarterback's best friend right down here in the red zone. Ackleson and Harrison split wide right. Perka looks, looks, got time. Now flushed, keeps the ball, and touchdown, Carroll College! Boy, he did a nice job right there. He wanted those two tight ends, Chris, but he, he felt the time was running out, pulled it down, and Perka, that athleticism we mentioned earlier that he came in and injected some life into the offense with going for the first down, runs it into the end zone for the first score of the day. Great job by that young man. Wanted to do it with his arm. Athlete enough to do it with his legs. Carroll College, six points, awaiting the pending extra point. Spencer Berger in for the extra point. Nothing there for Perka. Took it in himself for the first touchdown of the afternoon, first points of the afternoon. Extra point is up and it is good. 2.53 to go second quarter. And that gets the fans going here at Nelson Stadium. It's got the players going as they cap off a great drive. Bobby and Perka does it from eight yards out. You saw his offensive lineman. That fires them up. You know, hey, they did a great job protecting. It's a little difficult. That, that field narrows up down there. And the Rocky defense knows that he's going to go after those two guys that are 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 long angular dudes that have had some success on this, this deal. But they did it behind those tight ends. And, you know, in, in the end, when they weren't able to complete the pass or find a, uh, an alley to throw, Perkin 
Perka just be able to, you know, do it himself, run it into the end zone right in front of Austin. All right, let's go down to Austin Parr for that last touchdown. Yeah, speaking of finishing, one of the biggest things we talked with offensive coordinator Alex Fanestill and head coach Troy Purcell was that offensive line that you spoke about. You know, the Carroll College offense has struggled to get in the end zone when they end the red zone, and that's one heck of a finish right there heading into halftime. Well, in a game like this, one touchdown's big. Uh, neither team's really been able to put sustained drives together, and the Saints certainly did on that last one, and 7 nothing looks pretty big in a game like this. We talked about the investment in various aspects of your offense. What started out as a two-yard gain, a three-yard gain like that, you know, Carroll was able to, you know, convert on third down and then make the big play when it had, and that offensive line's been consistent right there, paying off for them there on that drive with seven. Powell kicks it off and slipping and falling at the 15-yard line. So once again, Baradon, or, or that, Baradon indeed was the guy returning the ball, but he slips and falls inside the 15. So to be first down from the 14-yard line, and again, just horrible field position for Rocky. And not a lot of time here in the first half. Well, nobody tackled him. It was the footing right there where he, I mean, it's championship baseball right there. He slid into first, and unfortunately, when any part of your body other than your feet's on the ground, maybe a hand, you're down. And so that guy slid into first, balls on the 14. And so Rocky, he looked like they had a decent return, but before the field gave out from underneath the returner's foot. Tribble feels pressure, now throws this one up for grabs right into double coverage, and it is almost intercepted. Ill-advised pass is really no chance to make the reception. Yeah, yeah Spearhoff, the defensive back, knocks it down, but boy, he threw right into double coverage at the 40-yard line. Well, his his slot defender was his slot was was covered right there, and he just chucked it up for anybody. Let's go to Austin. Gentlemen, one thing to keep an eye on for this drive, Elijah Wilson, number 10, he's on the punt coverage. He did come up with a little bit of an injury. He's the one guarding Trey Henry, who still is held without a catch. That's something to watch for with this drive. All right, second and 10 for the 14. Tribble now, pressure up the middle, and this one is going to be intercepted at the 38-yard line. Coming down with it is Caden Gardner. Gardner didn't even have to move right there. Yeah. Tribble just watched it the whole way. Gardner maybe take two or three steps right there, and he ball was thrown right to him. He had one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Gardner just popped up and hit him in the chest. Well, and the Saints now with an opportunity to add to the lead. They've got it at the 38-yard line, two timeouts remaining. No, they have all three timeouts remaining. So plenty of time to try to put some more points on the board before the half. Dribble just, you know, the, first, the play before, he just chucked it up right there. I don't know where, where his reads were, but, you know, he had his number one receiver one-on-one -on, -one on the edge with, you know, Austin gives us the, the insight right there, but I like his chances on the edge. Perka going right after it, up top. That is caught by Ackleton at the 25-yard line. Ackleton just running the deep out right there. And Perka delivers a strike. Everything was, that was kind of a timing route on a sloppy field. That's tough to do, but you know, a lot of confidence right there in that purple huddle. Just backs out of bounds untouched, stops the clock. Don't have to use a timeout. Lots of time, lots of, not a lot of field left. Ackleton has been good today. Young man out of Gig Harbor, Washington. First down, 25. Burgess slams up in there to the 20. Gain of five, second and five. Yeah, this offensive line now, you know, just pushing, you know, using their weight, getting after this rocky defensive interior defensive line. Carson Achoa will check in. Collins comes out. Collins second down and six. Those are Boy, two Collins big is a, he's a good looking tight end, isn't he? Both Collins of these and both kids. of those guys. They used him very effectively on that last drive. Just athletic too. I mean, a lot of skills there. They'll stay on the ground. And this is Burgess inside the 15 and a first down for the Saints. Big lane created up front by that Carroll offensive line. 
Ochoa and the rest of the boys. You and I got pretty excited when we started talking about tight ends. That doesn't happen a lot in Frontier Ball, but you and I talking over the top of each other about Ochoa and Collins. Those two guys, as soon as they started finding a way to implement them, whether it's in the run game or the pass game, this Carroll offense came to life. Well, and then you have Andrew Simon on the other side for exactly. Rocky. He's a great tight end as well. Okay, so first down from the 14. <laughs> Again, Saints still with all three timeouts remaining. And they roll the pocket and tripped up and brought down. That was a great open field tackle by Wes Moet. He did a great job there staying with it. You know, he had a guy hanging on him and he was just out reaching for the quarterback, made a big play. And forces Carroll to take that timeout. You know, they got three of them. That's not a big deal right there. But just that little bit of instability right there and Perkin not able to recover. So a loss on the play, Saints burn a timeout, but again, still two remaining. Exactly a minute to play here in the first half. And as you mentioned in the break, if you like defense, you're gonna love this kind of game. I mean, a lot of hard hitting and yards tough to come by. A lot of fun to watch. We talked about you know how excited we were about the uh, the, the Carroll College tight ends, and then Simon on the other side having their biggest offensive play with the acrobatic catch down the seam right there. A little bit of a throwback weather game. A little bit of a throw. You know, maybe not all the way back, but nonetheless, not necessarily the wide open pitch and catch type offenses. We're seeing a good mix of run and pass. And then for you know those old school guys, there's a lot of good defense being played here today. No question. So the loss is back to the 19. That's going to bring up second and 15 for Carroll. They put two seconds back on the clock. So here we go on second down. And Perka looks left. Now little they go screen. underneath. A little screen to Burgess, who's got running room close to the first down. It'll be third and short. That one took a long time to to set up Prince Johnson there to knock him down. But even when the Rocky defense, uh, defensive players realized what was going on, they couldn't stop. So this is gonna bring up third and about a yard. Ball's marked at the six yard line. Boy, you got a lot of options right now if you're Carroll College. You, you got two downs, you got a couple of timeouts. Now they got one timeout because they one just, used just used one and Coach Purcell's down there saying, hey, I need more time. He was he was asking for the timeout by the time they recognized it. He's down there arguing, trying to you know, argue for more time. Oh, here we go. Well, he, he gets two, two more seconds. Two more. He gets two more. So, you know, Coach, just by a you know subtle argument, he's gained four seconds back. He's done something nobody else can do. He's turned back time twice now in the same offensive possession. Well, even a, a field goal at this point, right before the half, Bobby, in, in lieu of the huge. way this game's been played, would be really big. It's huge. And, you know, there was a time where Carroll hadn't even, in the first quarter, they hadn't been across the 50. And in the second quarter, you know, just playing, sticking to their guns, their type of football, they're having some success. Of course, they did key, you know, one of the big keys is the turnover by Rocky, just throwing it down in the seam to the safety that was waiting for that ball. Carroll trying to capitalize, trying to get seven instead of three. Jack England in at fullback. He's the up back here on third down. Perka pulls it down. Now throws in zone, touchdown, Carroll College. Wow, what a play to Jaden Harrison and a score. Well, Jaden Harrison just run on the under right there. They bring in the fullback, throw a little window dressing, and then run the under right there with Harrison. Harrison out of St. George, Utah, comes up with the second score in just minutes here after going scoreless for most of the first half. Carroll College jumping out really in the last five minutes of the half to a four, well, 13, pending the outcome of this PAT. What a well-designed play, too. As they made it look easy. Harrison was wide open for the score. And now the extra point with 41 seconds to go in the first half. A little movement up on the line. We're gonna back Carroll up here. Yep, they showed everything with the fullback, went right to him, pulled the ball back, didn't roll out or anything, just kind of stayed tucked right in there and protected. And Perka, Perka able to uh, deliver a strike there to Harrison. So, Carroll, you know, finish in the half like you want to if you're Coach Purcell.
plenty of leg, kick us up and through. So the Fighting Saints with two touchdowns late in the second quarter, pitching the shutout against Rocky, and they lead it 14 to nothing. And Austin talked about it at the top of the show, how important this is. This is a season-ending game for Carroll if you don't win as far as the postseason goes at 4-2. and two just on the outside looking in in the top 25. So this would be an enormous victory and keep their hopes alive for that Frontier Conference title. Yeah, there's some big games no matter, week in, week out with Carroll. You know, the, the battle of I-15, whether it's a Dylan Butte or here, those are always big games. For a team like Rocky to come here nationally ranked on really the first fall day that we've seen this year uh, in the true spirit of football on a grass field, fighting it out. Uh, way to answer the bell at the end of the half for this Carroll College Fighting Saints team. Well, it's an intimidating place to come in and play. And you look at the uh, uh, the facilities here at, at Nelson Stadium, and all you have to do is look at that scoreboard if you want to see some intimidation with those six national championships in the Mike Van Deest era. And, boy, what a, what a tradition this school has put together. Yeah, tough place to win here at Nelson Stadium. It sure is. So Bears will get it with under a minute to go here. And again. We saw that last you know, time. Just slipping and falling. So field position. Boy, the field position has not gone Rocky's way in this one. Yeah, Matt White right there. Hey, same thing happened to you last time. Learn from it. You can't make those hard angle cuts at top speed, buddy. That's what Coach Stutz is telling him right there. Hey, we're on grass now. This, this works a little bit different. Coach Stutz was a quarterback back in his day. Yes, he was. And, uh, you know, when he was at Wyoming, he was the freshman freshman of the year in the Mountain West concert, Conference, engineered one of the great upsets that season in college football when they went down and knocked off Tennessee. <laughs> he was the quarterback of that Wyoming team, and they called that the biggest upset of the year in college football back in 2008. Well, he's going to have to pull some of those tricks out of his hat. We're going to have to figure that, that out. And, you know, Tennessee's come a long way from getting upset at Wyoming to last week, beating uh, what many consider the number one team in the nation. So it can be done, evidently. Well, Stutz uh, transferred fr from Wyoming and went on to play quarterback for Morningside College, which is, uh, I guess, if you will, the new Carroll College in this generation. They've dominated NAI. And that's going to be the end of the first half. And Carroll College, with those two late second quarter touchdowns, really... Uh, putting a sting into the Batland Bears as they lead it 14 to nothing at the break. So Rocky will head to the locker room. They'll regroup, talk things over, see if they can't get the offense untracked. And for Carroll College, you bet, taking care of business in the capital city. You're watching college football. We're at halftime on SWX.
Welcome back to Nelson Stadium. We got the Carroll College Fighting Saints and the Battle and Barrels. Bears. Uh, Carroll leads 14 to nothing at halftime. We're, at, we're with Athletic Director Charlie Gross. And first off, Charlie, thank you so much for having us and letting SWX broadcast this game. How you doing out here? I know it's cold. We're about two degrees from uh, from some snow here. It looks like it's almost sleet coming down. It's perfect football weather, Frontier Conference football weather, and it's not even November yet. This is what October is all about. Well, Charlie, just want to speak to you about Carroll Athletics. You've been the director for a, a good amount of time, very successful. What can we expect for the athletics of Carroll uh, coming up in the near future? Well, this is always a busy time of the year when you're crossing over between your fall sports and winter sports. Um, we're finishing up the winter season with uh, our last, or sorry, our our, our fall season with our last soccer games tomorrow and uh, we host the Frontier Conference cross country meet on November 4th but this coming week we also start our winter sports with basketball we host uh, we host uh, men's basketball on Friday night while we're still playing volleyball we've got volleyball on Thursday we've got volleyball on Saturday we've got football on Saturday so it's an exciting time of the year if you're a fighting Saints fan speaking of basketball Carroll College was ranked both men's and women's preseason poll number one pick to win the title what can we expect uh, from Carroll College basketball Basketball fans, what, do we, what can we expect from those teams? Well, we know that the Fighting Saints will com compete well night in and night out. The Frontier Conference is so strong in both men's and women's basketball. And if you haven't come out and watched a Frontier Conference basketball game, uh, people should because they're highly competitive, great crowd atmospheres, a atmosphere, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, you never know who's going to win the game. It's uh, one thing that I'm looking forward to. It's going to be my first Frontier Conference basketball season. But let's get to Carroll Athletics. What is uh, anything in the plans in the future going on soon with Carroll Athletics? Well, you know, we're always trying to improve uh, uh, the facilities for, for our student athletes. Um, we've been working hard in our P Center. That's our indoor building by renovating spaces and getting them updated. We're very proud of Nelson Stadium. Nelson Stadium is, is a wonderful place to watch football, to watch soccer. Um, we need to enhance our outdoor practice facilities, and so we're working on some projects that will give our teams a better opportunity to practice in all weather conditions. Uh, and that might in mean enhancing our surface here, maybe with a, synthet a synthetic surface. There has been some word that we may get some stands on the other side of the stadium. Can you speak upon that, or is that something maybe uh, later on down the road in the future? Well, when we go with our uh, kind of announce what our what our project will look like. There's going to be different phases to the scope of the project. I think we have to work on our surface. We have to work on uh, some lighting. We have to develop some landscaping. And then obviously we'd like to create some balance to the stadium and get some bleachers on the other side to really close the bowl in. Well, it's really exciting. A lot of fun stuff coming from Carroll. Up 14-0 in a must-win game for the Carroll College Fighting Saints football team. We're going to take a short break. We'll come back and review the first half right here from Nelson Stadium. Get you a little more level. Here, I got another one. I'll be good at another one for you. Hang in there. I'll go get another one. Here you go. I'll take the rest stuff. I'll go get something dry. Yeah, I mean, we're a few degrees away from...
And welcome back to Nelson Stadium on the campus of Carroll College, where the Saints lead the Batlin Bears 14 to nothing as they look for win number five on the season against two losses. Rocky five and one, trailing the College of Idaho. Second place in the frontier. Big game, as we said, for both of these teams. And Bobby in the first half, some big plays, not a lot of scoring until late. Yeah, Carroll started off a little bit slow. They tried to get it going here with a, a toss to Ackleshin right there. Gets out of bounds, but then Rocky comes up, tries to go for it on fourth down, but Kocap makes a big play right there, big defensive tackle. Started off there, see Tony Collins, that big tall drink of water, and tight end right there making that big catch down the seam. Big plays here, kind of the story of the first quarter. We see the tight ends, and Simon there, big guy for Rocky, makes a catch here, and you'll see him streaking down the seam, tips it to himself, tiptoes down the seam, drags a guy. We see these tight ends having a bigger role here today, and then right here you see Rocky trying to get the ball to him. Not necessarily successful. Tip ball incomplete, trying to get it to Simon, but Carroll College knows where their bread's butter is. They get it right here to Ochoa, their big tight end. Breaks a tackle down the seam. Big play right there, and Carroll having some success on offense right here, running the ball, trying to get some things going, and then finally, no scoring, but right here, trying to get it done back to himself. Gets it in there for the score right at the end of the half. Perka having a big impact there. Rocky gets it back, tosses it back, doesn't want it, gives it back to Carroll there. The interception, big play for Carroll, and Carroll right there, the little play action effective right at the end, and he kicking it to Harrison, getting the score to where we sit right now, 14 to nothing at the end of the first half here at SWX. Chris, not a lot of scoring to begin with, but we finished it strong. Well, we sure did, and they've had a great mix in the Saints offense uh, Burgess running the football and then coming up top and throwing to their twin tight ends who have had an, an outstanding first half Burgess the junior from Junction City Oregon their leading rusher coming into this game and uh, got it done on the ground so Bears trying to make some adjustments here at halftime as the rain continues to fall here in the capital city Everyone's scurrying for the tents right now, try to dry off, but don't go away. We got another half of football coming your way. It's halftime here at Nelson Stadium. You're watching college football on SWX.
Halftime here in Helena, 14 to nothing. Carroll College leads over Rocky Mountain College. And Bobby, we talked about the standings in the Frontier Conference and the Yotes of the College of Idaho, perfect in six and zero. And then Rocky just a game back, and there sits Carroll College in third, tied with Montana Tech at four and two. Yeah, Tech's 24th in the country. Carroll's receiving votes. This is a huge game right here, not only in the standings of the conference, but national rankings right now. Because we see Tech is up over Southern Oregon 28-14 at, at the half or just before. And then Western is out in front of uh, College of Idaho 20-14. So this could be a big weekend in, in movement within the frontier. And then, you know, depending on how things fall, you know, we're only halfway through today. Well, everybody comes back to the get if, if if uh, College of Idaho takes a loss today, that brings everyone back into the mix. And Montana Western was the team picked to win the Frontier Conference, if you remember, this summer in the preseason. And just a reminder, the College of Idaho game with Montana Western will follow this game immediately. So stay tuned for that one. And here is the schedule right now as Montana Northern heads to Eastern Oregon. Someone's going to win that one today. Southern Oregon is at Montana Tech. We talked about the College of Idaho and the Bears at Carroll College. That is week eight in the Frontier Conference as we start the stretch drive here. We're coming out of that bye week. Everybody got the bye last week, unless you had some scheduling conflict. We, you know, we worked into that, that, uh, that bye week a long time ago to allow some flexibility in scheduling. But that's a great thing for these colleges because number one, kids can focus on their academics uh, a little more intently during the you know that that first semester of school, but also it allows you to get healthy. It allows you know the the the, uh, the campus to kind of take a little bit of a breath and gather itself, and then it allows for this end of the season push. Both of these teams it couldn't happen at a better time to answer some questions of who's going to be available, and then coming out here. You know, Carroll was a little bit tight at the beginning that first quarter. Both these teams looked a little bit apprehensive. But then second quarter opened up and there was a little bit of a, a back and forth until Carroll finally uh, broke the seal there in the end zone and, and just ran it in there a couple of times. But, uh, you know, it's it's nice to have that little bit of a break in the in the middle of the season with a bye week so that you can get guys healthy and, and, and get guys kids refocused on the, the true intention behind college football at this level. Well, as you know, Bobby, the weather can change very quickly in the state of Montana. And, you know, in Billings this week, Ooh. we were up over 80 degrees Thursday, sunshine in 70s yesterday, and then wham, we get hit with the rain and the cold, and it's going to be a rain-snow mix here, up, uh, no doubt, by the end of the day as the temperature continues to drop. And, but for the fans that did make it out this afternoon, they're being treated to a a real good performance by this Carroll College team, uh, both on offense and defense, is they played extremely well. Well, the weather is going to affect those kids on the field right now. They're young, they're full of adrenaline and, and, and toughness. You don't see sleeves on these cats. The fans, however, underneath Tech, underneath uh, Nelson Stadium, I'll tell you what. They've got some heaters in there with the concessions. I'd be stuffing my face right now, getting <laughs> coffee and pretzels, and I, I get back in line after I got my stuff because they're probably pretty efficient in there, but there's some nice, nice gas heaters underneath there. They did it right here. They're keeping everybody warm. There's a lot of people as we went to break dressed as umbrellas. <laughs> well, th this this facility uh, is not only the premier facility in the Frontier Conference, but among any high schools across the country, it doesn't get any better than this. I mean, they have wonderful facilities. They continue to make improvements to it, but uh, this is a, a just an absolutely postcard, uh, picture postcard view that we have from up here. The mountains are in the backdrop and a gorgeous stadium. And uh, what a great place to play NAI college football. Well, both these schools, you know, th their settings are pretty unique. Carol's right, brought the, brought the field back to campus. Dr. Sack, uh, under his leadership, you know, he, he's got a vision for what he wants to make this place. And uh, under his leadership, we saw Charlie Gross there, the athletic director here, giving his vision for some things that are happening and how they're upgrading facilities, always with that eye forward. I talked to Bob Wilmoth, the president at Rocky this week. He was sure in tune with the importance of this game as well. And, and both these guys, both those guys, Dr. Sack and Dr. Wilmoth, they understand the importance that athletics brings to campus and the investment that you have to return into those programs. To, to make it worth the while of these kids to come out and travel. You know, you, you talk about, you know, 
uh, different aspects of sports in Montana. You know, this natural grass field in a bowl setting on a, on a hill uh, here in Helena. It, it is, it, it's great. It's, it's actually really great to watch it indoors though, Chris. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's much nicer here. It's a perfect 72 degrees. And and uh, yeah, it's uh, this is the way to watch a game today. That's for sure. Well, you know, the, the natural grass, you hardly ever see that anymore in, in uh, college football. And uh, you know, who knows if they'll go to that uh, uh, synthetic turf, but, but uh, it, it is it is fun to watch them play on the on the grass like it used to be. And one thing about the Frontier Conference, it continues to grow. And I know you remember back in the day, it was it was the four or five schools here in Montana. You had to play everyone twice. Played everybody twice. You played everyone twice, and that was no fun. But then you started seeing the expansion when you brought in the College of Idaho, and you brought in Eastern Oregon, and you brought in Southern Oregon, and now. More expansion is on the horizon as uh, Arizona Christian will be coming into the league. And it's all to get to that point now where you have a conference where you don't have to play anybody twice. Well, the weird thing is, is you ask anybody in the frontier, you know, hey, are you bringing in? There's a college in California. We don't want to say its name or anything like that. You don't want to discuss that openly in public. But that college is bringing back football. And they had members of the Frontier Conference at that school, which shall remain unnamed. Feels like a Harry Potter novel. <laughs> but you know, it, this this expansion is happening even at the NAI level. And it's important because that participation thing is huge these days. You're seeing people move all over at the big time college deal. At this level, the ability to participate and the meaning of uh, uh, that these schools have to the state of Montana, the traditions, not just to care with all their national championships, and whatnot that they have down there but what football bring brings to this this state and allows more kids to you know get to play get to play longer and, and, and further on into their career and it allows a game day experience you know in all types of weather all types of surfaces so uh, this conference is integral to uh, college education across this state and these two schools are founding members of that conference yeah, and the uh, expansion is is it's good for the it's good for the conference. It's good for the schools. Good for and, the NEI. Oh, absolutely, it is. And you know, we, we talked a little bit about the national championships here at Carroll College. And I would say, when you know the history continues to be written about sports in Montana, that is something we'll never be seen again. We never saw before that, and probably will never see after that that many multiple championships in that in that short span mike van deese day when they hired mike he had a vision and you know there everybody wants credit but mike van deese deserves the lion's share there he did such a great job for a long time instilled expectations and uh you know he, he put him on the front of sports illustrated stephen powell puts a foot into it this one will go into the back of the end zone and because of that rocky get their best field position of in the a, day in a while <laughs> wow right? man well they, they the returner got the uh lex you heard the uh loud and clear what coach stutz was talking to him about hey the the, the field's not in the greatest shape brother we uh might want to let those go into the end zone so rocky's gonna get the ball at the 25 start the second half got a full complement of timeouts all the clock left nothing ran off there see what kind of halftime adjustments coach stutz and the charges his charges rather made underneath the uh, warm Nelson Stadium. Well, Pat Carroll's the offensive coordinator for the Bears as well as the O-line coach. So we'll see what adjustments he's made. Let's see what Rocky dials up as we begin the third quarter from the 25. Tribble has gone all the way at quarterback for Rocky on first down. They send Wilcox now out of the backfield and this time they throw in that open area and that is caught and a first down catch. And I believe that's, yeah, that's Trey Henry, his first catch, I believe, of the afternoon. Well, they just read it out. It, Carroll's playing that zone. He just dropped it right in the little empty area right there. Picks up the first down, a little pitch and catch by this battling bear offense. Henry, the leading receiver on this team coming into today. Redshirt sophomore from Idaho Falls, Idaho. So the ball gain all the way to the 37 and a first down. Opening drive, third quarter. Saints showing some pressure off the edge. Tribble reads it, fires out there for Simon. Too high, incomplete second down. He had Henry again right over the top. Real quick hitch right there. Pitch it outside there. And, and ball gets wet in these type of conditions. Uh, doesn't matter. The, the gloves almost become ineffective. It, 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 you got a lot better chance catching without that ball. It becomes a little bit sticky depending on how much rain is falling. 
Well, I think an important drive for the Bears coming out here in the third quarter to try to get something going offensively, even if they can put a drive together, get a little confidence. Second and 10 from the 37. Tribble. He's got some time. Looks right. Now comes back the other way. And that is caught right at the first down marker. Do they give him the catch? Yeah, they're going to give him the catch. I was, you know, we, we like to say this term when we get to sit warm and dry up top of the stadiums. There's a bang, bang situation right there. But he found Trey Henry sitting right at the sticks. They're going to give him the first down. They're going to mark him a yard short. And Spearhoff out there in coverage to drive him out of bounds. Just ensuring that he doesn't get the stick. Nope. No, they, well, there, now, now they're all, moving the chains. There's a... There's a bunch of stuff going on. We got second down, but moving chains. That doesn't happen very often. Well, the ball's marked right at the 46. We got third down on this sideline. So we're, we got all sorts of things going on. There's got to, <laughs> we got to get some folks with some earpieces talking Man, to each other. you're just nailed over here. So well, they moved the chains to indicate a first down, but no official signal yet. And then over there on the Carroll sideline, there's the, the guy that's running interference. He ran interference for Coach Stutz earlier, just having the discussion, entertaining him with different. Yeah, they're going to bring it back. They're going to bring it back. So it is second one. You know, they, they, we were talking about the coaches. And uh, if you remember a couple of years ago during COVID, the Saints had that, remember that little interesting quirk of the schedule where they played like a four-game schedule yep. in the spring and carol opted in rocky opted out they played four games they went three and one and then wound up playing morningside yeah in the first round of the playoffs so this is going to bring up third and oh, yeah there we go third and one third and one oh. yes. so this down marker had it right this guy knew what he was doing down here well remember there was so much discussion as, as to if you were going to play or if you were not going to play and this is Wilcox just looking for something, and he looks like Ooh, he's going to be marked they're short. Gonna, they're not going to give it to him. This is a decision time now for Coach Stutz with an offense that hasn't moved the ball all day, and you're now looking at fourth and inches from yeah. just inside the 47. So what do you do here? Well, short yardage, how much, do you, how much pressure and how much do you expect out of your offensive line? All right, so... They're going to dial it up here, and ball's on the ground. Tribble falls on it, and Carroll College will get the ball back, Tucker Jones turn over right on there. downs. Tucker Jones, the other big 11 on the defensive side right there. Jones able to, you know, get through with the little, just squirts through right there, but Tribble, you know, that ball hits him right in the right spot, and Jones knifes through there, ensuring that there's no first down picked up, but unfortunate Mishandling of the ball by Tribble right there costs his battle and bears. That, that's a tough thing, or you, you know, you always got to look it into your hands. But as a quarterback, that, that's that's tough. So, well, and the, the weather has played such a role in this game. You know, losing your footing, being caught deep in your own end, handling the football. Brusvin now shows pressure. They run away from it. And a gain of one on the play, maybe second and nine. Yeah, Moei right there, you know. Good pursuit down the line of scrimmage. And, you know, both these defensive fronts are, 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 they've done a great job for the most part. Just, you know, right there, Carroll seems a little bit more opportunistic when, when the opportunity presents itself. And, and, you know, right there, you saw Tucker Jones, or, uh, you know, he, he did a great job just finding a way to, to make a play when, it, when he needed to. Second and nine from the 43. Parka. Got all time. kinds of time, pulls it up, falls forward to the 44. That's a gain of five on the play. We'll bring up third and, well, we'll call it third and six. Yeah, Baradon, you know, kind of tries to get away from his, his offensive lineman right there. Disengage just gets a little bit of a piece. And that's one of the things we're not seeing a lot of is broken tackles really in the open field. When you get gang tackles now, the tight ends are big enough to where they can fall off of those. But Perka a couple times, very, very just a thumbnail away from making a big play, just being brought down on this sloppy field. Third and six now from the 40. And the Saints. Parker looks left, now comes back across the middle, and he's got his man. Ochoa, Ochoa with a big tight end, and a first down for Carroll to the 25-yard line. Ochoa just finding space. He runs a nice little square in. He was split out wide right there. 
Well, they have found something. Your picture here, and, and, and Perka does a nice job just reading, going through his reads and delivering a strike right there to Ochoa. Puts it in his body so he doesn't have to reach out. So a first down gain to the 25. First down, 12 minutes to go, third quarter. All Saints since midway through the second quarter. Burgess slams up in there, and tough yardage. They'll give him one, maybe two on the play. Yeah, that's Moyai again. He's been solid in and for the uh, Batlin Bear interior defense. And again, you know, that... Carroll, credit to them for not going away from the run. They're just making subtle little investments, not having a lot of success, one and two yards here and there, but finding a way later in those set of downs to move the chains. Ochoa comes out. Rothy comes in on second and nine. And the give is to Burgess, who uh, first down gain inside the 15. Burgess breaks that first tackle right at the line of scrimmage right there. Spins around. You see him taking those little choppy steps. Spins around, finds a way to keep balance. Gives up his back a little bit, but backs his way over the first down marker, getting a new set of downs for this Carroll College offense. Uh, this Carroll College offensive line beginning to dominate now. Starting to get a little bit of push, aren't they? Yeah, and Burgess, you know, just enough running to keep that defense honest, and then they come back with a little play action, go to their tight ends. First down. Burgess again, and this time he may lose a yard. Yeah, Max Garcia right there, the redshirt freshman. Defensive tackle, just showing a little pursuit down the line of scrimmage. Stops him for a little bit of a loss there. Market at the 14, so second and 11. For the Saints, opening drive for Carroll here in the third quarter. Carroll offense, this is one of their strong points when they get both those tight ends in there. They're both up at the top of the screen there, bottom of the screen on TV, I guess. There's and Tony Collins Perk, right in front of them. Oh, wide open as they go to Collins, and Collins stays on his feet. They're going to mark him out of bounds at the, looks like the six-yard line, and that's going to bring up third down. Well-designed play, Perka. Rolled out to his left and had a wide open Collins, the tight end underneath. He took his time at letting that thing set up, but he had the time to let it you know, come, come to him a little bit. And Collins wasn't his first read. It was actually his last read. And great job by the quarterback knowing that that's not necessarily his strength right there, running on a sloppy field. Get it to your athlete. And Collins able to get a couple more yards after catching it. Jack England, the fullback, will check in on third and three. Now to shift him out of the backfield, split him out wide to the right. Third down, Perka looks, now steps up, rolls to his right, got some room, and angling for the end zone, very close to a first down. Got a flag on the far side right there. But I'll tell you what, Nolan McCafferty triggered really, really fast. As soon as Perka started, you know, pulled the ball down, McCafferty just Johnny on the spot came down and launched himself making sure that Carroll doesn't find the end zone on that play. Penalty goes against the Saints, so that negates what would have been a first down. Boy, that was really close right there. They, I think they got him with a delay of game. I thought he got it off. So they'll back it up to the 11-yard line, and now they're looking at third and eight. Ockelchin and Harrison split wide to the right. Collins comes across along with Ochoa, so double tight on the left side. And he looks that way. Perka got plenty of time, pulls it down at the five slides. And they're going to mark him short of the first down by a couple of yards. Yeah, he was definitely short, but good job by that young man right there to be able to understand there's nobody in the middle of the field and getting down. As they tried to keep him out of the end zone successfully. And, and now here comes the young Billings West product. Spencer Berger, this is just a little more than an extra point. But again, the, yeah, boy, these points are huge right here. Yeah, every point is exactly right. You know, the, Three possession game if he hits the field goal. So the spot will be from the 13. So 23-yard field goal attempt. 
from the left hash. High snap, they get it down, the kick is up and away, and it no is good. No, no good. Bad snap. Couldn't get it down quick enough, so Rocky turns the Saints away at 8.28 to play in the third, 14 to nothing, our score from Elena. Today's Frontier Conference college football game on SWX is brought to you in part by Carroll College. Carroll College, not for school, but for life. So this Saints defense continues to pitch the shutout, leading 14 to nothing here as Rocky goes back to work on offense from the 20 yard line after the missed field goal. Perka. Goes up oh. top and he is taken down and a big time sack in the backfield. Forrest Guero comes crashing in and takes Perka down. Rocky drops back to pass and they had, they've done a great job all day protecting the quarterback, but right there, Tribble takes it right in the teeth. He un, almost unblocked Forrest Guero. He's done a great job. A little bit more with defensive line. We're going to take it right down to Austin on the sidelines. Yeah, that was an obvious miss block by the offensive line from Rocky. But two things you guys have been talking about is defensive line in this second half. Look at Carroll College. It just made a huge play. But Rocky Mountain's defensive line was actually the one that held the Saints out of the end zone right there. Got pre uh, per pressure on Perka, excuse me, and held the Saints out of the end zone. So look for that Rocky Mountain defensive line to get their hands up because they do lead the conference in batting down balls. All right, thanks so much, Austin. Stay warm and dry down there. He's doing the tough, he's doing the tough work today, isn't he? He's a Southern Cal guy, toughing it out. He's getting tougher before our eyes. <laughs> we talk about developing people as we watch Trent Novak right there deliver a strike, the young freshman uh, effectively named Sunshine by our own Chris Byers. That's right, and he's getting a look now in relief from Perka. Yeah, Austin, little, uh, you know, <laughs> baptism by fire in the cold today in Helena. It's gonna get worse before it gets better, Austin. First pass is complete, and now they're going to set up a little screen. And Wilcox got some running room close to first down yardage. I think he's going to be about a yard short. So a new quarterback as Trent Nobach comes in. True freshman from Arlington, Washington. Played at Arlington High School. And looks good in his first two passes. Yeah, hits Simon the tight end, and then it rolls out and hits the screen. Yeah, very high on that young man for good reason after the first two uh uh, first two passes here is Rocky. Also, oh, they're going to punt here. They were short, fourth and one. I think the missed field goal probably leads to that decision. If they're down Absolutely. 17, they're going. But in a two-score game, pretty deep in their own end. Brosman punts this one. Rothy watches it hit. 
gets a nice roll for Rocky down inside the 30 all the way to the 26 yard line and that's where the Saints get the football leading 14 to nothing 646 to play in the third. Carroll College with the football and the lead, 14 to nothing, as they stop the Batland Bears on that last drive and take over on the 26. Saints offense, a much better job moving the football since midway through the second quarter. In fact, uh, Bobby, their offense pretty much moving the ball at will. Yeah, doing a good job with the mix of the run and the pass, being effective, and Perkett doing a good job managing both, both of those things. Saints will stay on the ground for a short game, picks up a couple. And that's par for the course for what they've done the whole game, really. Instead of, you know, getting one yard early, now they're getting two or three yards here. I, I Duncan Craft with the carry to the 29. So that'll bring up second and seven after the three-yard gain. Harrison down to the bottom of the screen on second down. Bears now creeping up. And Perka looks and pulls it down, somehow avoids the tackle. Picks up a couple on the play. He didn't have anything downfield. Rocky had good coverage, and so he did the right thing, pulling it down. Lots of action up front on offense and defense by both. That's a great battle inside by the front five for Carroll and then the front four for Rocky Mountain College. Real interesting the effect that, you know, the success on either one of those lines is having on the outcome of each individual play today, Chris. All right, so third and five now from the 32. And Perka. Here comes pressure from Brusman from the corner. Perka steps up inside again, and he's going to have a first down gain still on his feet to midfield. Perka to the 40, to the 35, down inside the 30, and a first down for Carroll College. What a run by quarterback Jack Perka. Rocky's defense stopped playing, Chris. I, 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 I haven't seen that. Well, I think he, they thought he was going to slide. Almost. But watch right here. you got guys watching right. each other. Uh, I thought you were going to have him, but, you know, the only person who didn't stop, Perka. He kept going. All for naught, though. We see him going the wrong direction if you're a purple fan here. Wow. They, a uh, holding the, call. Rocky's defense knew that. They saw the flag. They didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. per, per, preserving their uh, uh -huh. preserving their bodies right there. That's smart. Nice That's try. KG vet moves by the Rocky huh? defense. We're thinking about striking. And so... So a gain which would have been all the way down to the 35 of Rocky Mountain College, all the way back now to the 20, third and 15. From the 22, Perk has got time. Looks left, comes back to the right, has got a man, that's complete. 
to the 35-yard line, but short of the He's first short of the down. First down. You find those sticks. Yeah, I mean, Akachu was right there. And this is the second time that young man's come up a yard or two short, and we've got something mm. going on right here. We, a late flag. Sounds like somebody was chirping from the sidelines. Coach Purcell's having some words with. Whew, that's not one of those things. It looks like a sideline warning turned into much more than just that here. All right, so it's fourth down. Bakulchin just a couple of yards short on that reception. Did you so pick up the call there? Was that one's unsportsmanlike on the sideline, okay. and it was after the play, so they they took the yardage and then backed him up 15 from there. So, you know, there hasn't been a lot of penalties today, but that one hurts. Uh, what a what a uh, a sequence here from what would have been a first down at the Rocky 30 now all the way back on the penalty the ball inside the 20 yard line fourth down Rocky should get great field position kick coming down at the 45 and look at the bounce yeah the all key the way part down of the fair 25. catching it is actually catching it i mean it, that was an extra 15 to 20 yards of bounce on that one the second bounce actually rolled it further than the first one did but dwyer just let it hit and roll so good uh good punt by the carroll college yeah is that burger again that's yeah do, uh, he's pulling double duty didn't even make the two deep Oh, there he is. He's the backup punter, but uh, kicks like that earn you the starting job, don't they, Chris? Absolutely. First down for Rocky as they'll try to get this offense on track. Fourth, 25 to play in the third. Bears 5-1 and one on the season, trailing the College of Idaho by one game in the Frontier Conference standings. Tribbles back out there, Chris. Saints 4-2 and two was shaken up big time, but now back in. So, first down. Saints showing pressure up the middle. He gets rid of it. Incomplete intended for Simon. And credit that Carroll College, those linebackers coming straight up the middle. Now, Tucker Jones again. He's played a lot. He's had some pretty impactful hits in that Rocky Mountain College backfield. There's another one right there forcing the air and throw by Tribble. But there's a couple of linebackers back there just wreaking havoc. Jacob Resch and, and Tucker Jones both having some big impact on on accuracy by George Tribble today. Incomplete pass brings up second down from the 25. We'll stay on the ground and Wilcox spins away from one tackle, but that's it. Gain of a couple on the play third and long. Yeah, that's Resch again. Jacob Resch, number three, comes into your screen. A couple guys miss. He there, he's there to clean it up. He's got the Count Dracula neck piece on the back. How fitting here in October as we come up on Halloween this year. Everybody's got young kids out there. This weather wants to uh, remind us to bundle up and make sure that Spider-Man puts on a few pounds if it's cold out that night. Resh Redshirt Jr. from Billings West. Pick up a three, third and seven at the 28. Tribble rolls out right and that is gonna be caught but out of bounds, incomplete pass. Yep, out of bounds, fourth down. Good yeah. coverage back there. And again, a Bodie Smith that time, a good job from a defensive back position. Yeah, the pass complete to Donovan Selgren out there. And, and Rocky did a good job of picking up the initial pressure right there. Just triple delivering that ball just out of bounds. Yeah, it was Micah Ons. Check that. It was in coverage. So fourth down, or rather, yes, fourth and seven at the 28. Brusfin takes a bad snap. Rothy will let it hit and roll down inside the 40-yard line, and they'll mark it at the 37. Yeah, Brusfin took a shot right there. You saw him bobble the snap and the pressure from Carroll. He took a licking right there. He's going to go on defense right now and try to even the score. But, you know, he, there's a couple of guys that laid into that dude just after he got rid of the ball as a punter. Sometimes it's tough doing double duty, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Well, Carroll College more than content to to play this football back and forth. These three and outs has just eaten up clock right now, and Saints now back on offense, a chance to milk this clock here in the third quarter. 3:24 to play. Perka 
Fires out here in the flat. Got a man at the 35. Or at the 40, rather. Short game. Yeah, just over the 40 right there. But Perka trying to read through there. Good job. Looked like he wanted to fire early. Reset his feet. All those young quarterbacks out. Don't stand there like a statue. Perker right there, you know, he is a good athlete. We watched him run that in there. But, you know, he set his feet. And then he reset him and fired in a strike there. Good yardage on first down. Picks up five. So second and five from the 42. Clock continues to run. Under three to play third quarter. Stay on the ground to Burgess. This time met right at the line of scrimmage. That run game at Carroll, they, they're, they're sticking to it. They haven't given up on it. You know, little by little, they, they make incremental gains. And they might even lose a yard here and there, but it's so, it's been effective in other areas that you don't necessarily see. They might, might only get one yard, might only get half a yard, might get knocked back a yard, but just their commitment to it has allowed other things to open up in the passing game, and the, especially the play action pass. Third and six after the loss of one. Perka straight drop, looks, feels pressure, now rolls away from it, fires across the middle, incomplete. Nice job by Rocky as Braille Lipford steps around and knocks it down, will bring up fourth down. Well, some of the, some of the folks in the stands, they're pretty adamant that that was pass interference, but he did have his hand on his back, may have turned him, may not have turned him, but pass interference is one of those subjective calls where you can't really discuss you know how it happens to the eyes, and nobody saw that as pass interference, so it brings up fourth down here for Carroll. Great job by this rocky defense answering the bell. Dwyer standing back at his 20-yard line. On fourth down, Rocky gets the ball right back. Nice kick, Dwyer. Oh, hits it, loses it, and it's going to be recovered by Carroll College. Wow, what a huge turnover there as the Saints alertly fall on it and get the ball deep in Rocky territory. All right there, Joseph Dwyer. Another costly decision as a punt returner. Those are things that, you know, you gotta catch that ball so it doesn't get away from you, but you gotta catch the punts. It's a tough thing to do. It takes a lot of courage to do it because everybody's coming down on you, but that's why you're back there. And that's a big change of possession right there. All right, so here we go with the Saints first and 10 from the 18 after the fumble by Dwyer. Perka looks, comes back the other way, keeps it, steps up inside down to the 11-yard line and a nice seven-yard gain. Let's go down to the sidelines to Austin Parr. Yeah, one of the biggest things when we talk to uh, offensive coordinator Alex Fanis still, the success of Perka comes when he gets rid of the ball quickly. When he makes that one read, two read, and then boom, the ball comes out. The offensive line is doing a great job giving him enough time to find his targets. Look for him to find a tight end here on this possession. Well, they have been good at that position today. Gain of six, second and four. He's also done a good job scrambling. There's Burgess up inside and takes it down close to the first down. And he's got it. And he ran to that tight end side. He had both of those guys, yeah. Ochoa and Collins, were sitting over there doing a good job. You know, not destroying people off the ball or anything like that, but effective, you know, occupying defenders and then, you know, creating enough momentum there so Burgess can, you know, ram it up inside there and, and move the chains here. Brings up first and goal here for the fight, or the, I'm sorry, yeah, the fighting Saints. So Burgess gives the Fighting Saints a first and goal from the seven. Burgess again inside the five, and they'll mark him just right at the four-yard line. So picks up three. The demeanor up front for Carroll has really changed. He, he, once they got inside the 10, inside that red zone area, they're downhill right now, getting good push up front. And you saw Burgess able to, you know, come, he's running downhill hard, just following those blockers. And they got great push, good, great, best yardage they've had running the ball on first down today. Now let's see if they run a play. They don't have to. Now they shift and put Perka up under center on second and four. Burgess hit right at the line of scrimmage, falls forward, gets down to the two-yard line on the final play of the third quarter. 
So when we come back, the Saints two yards away from increasing their lead. It's 14 to nothing from Nelson Stadium as Carroll continues to lead over Rocky Mountain College. Today's Frontier Conference game on SWX brought to you in part by Rocky Mountain College. Rocky Mountain College committed to excellence. Third down and gold from the two. Out of the eye. Oh, look at this. Perkett can walk into the end zone and he scores. Boy, what a great job selling it inside to Burgess. And then rolls outside for the third touchdown of the afternoon. And Jack Perk are putting an exclamation point on a great football game from the quarterback position. Did a great job with the offhand there, hiding it, and then just sprinting to the corner. Ooh, almost loses it right there, but not before he gets across the goal line for another Carroll College touchdown. Beautiful play fake inside. Cover your ears. Berger on for the extra point, up and through. So on the first play of the fourth quarter, Carroll College ups the lead to 21 to nothing here at Nelson Stadium over Rocky Mountain College.
Coverage of today's Frontier Conference game is made possible in part by A1 Rentals. A1 Rentals offers the largest inventory of construction, homeowner, and party rentals in Helena. Locally owned and family operated since 1959, A1 Rentals. And an A1 performance by Carroll College today as they've upped the lead to 21 to nothing. Jack Perka rolls in for the third touchdown of the afternoon and now desperation time for Rocky and Bobby I don't know what you do if you're this Bears offense I, you, you've tried everything nothing's worked and all the credit in the world of this Saints defense which has been lights out against a very good Rocky offense yeah George Tribble today hasn't been able to find that empty space that he's been able to the first couple of weeks here so once again Bears go back to work on offense to see if they can't get something going. Well, the high school regular season came to a close last night, and, and right here in the capital city, big game at Vigilante Stadium, Helena Capital, Helena High, Crosstown, and Austin, Helena Capital, arguably the best team in AA this year. They cap off an unbeaten season. Yeah, it was honestly one of the biggest games this city has ever seen. Beautiful scene at Vigilante Stadium. That stingy capital defense is what honestly came out on top. The rain made it a little tough for both offenses. Carter Kraft, the quarterback of the Helena Bengals, just could not get anything going. But give all the credit in the world to that capital Bruins defense. They're going to make a deep run in the postseason. And now they have the first round by and home field advantage and the right to host the state championship game. All right, well, Helena Capital, Bobby, over the years, uh, not in recent years, but Helena Capital, one of those great double-A programs, got a whole bunch of state championships hanging in that gym, don't they? Yeah, they do, and it, Kyle Mahelish, that guy's done a great job over the years, pretty consistent in, in putting together good teams. Now he's got what looks to be a great one over there at Helena Capital. Trent Nobach back at quarterback now for Rock. He finds his big tight end, but... Um, just a gain of one on the play will bring up third and long. So Nobach, the true freshman from Arlington, Washington, in relief of Tribble at quarterback. Well, Tribble hasn't had any of the answers right there. No. You know, we've seen uh, Soto right there for the good tackle of Simon. Well, they're really high on this young man at quarterback for Rocky, recruited out of Washington. Played just a couple of snaps early in the season. Now here's a full-out blitz right up the middle. Nobach rolls out of it, but nowhere to go. Incomplete pass brings up fourth down. Right there, just scrambling for his life. They zeroed that one out and forced him away from any of, any of his receivers. Watch the pressure up the middle, Bobby, as they just sold out and came with it forcing Nobach to roll out of the pocket and nowhere to go. Yeah, everybody was over to his left, and he started running to his right, and but that was just self-preservation right there, trying to just get rid of it, live to see another player. He took a pretty good shot uh, at the end of that play. And here we go. Oh, Brusman's going to have to it's been it's a gonna little say bit. to ice down that leg, but I don't know if you want to do that today. It's, uh, it's probably pretty, it's <laughs> done naturally today. No <laughs> ice needed. And he's backed up. Gets a foot into it. Ball hits at the 40-yard line and out of bounds. So for Carroll College now, a steady diet of running the football here to protect this 21-0 lead. And when we come back, Saints with the football and a 21-point lead. Looking for win number five on the season.
This is where you hand the football over to the offensive line of Carroll College and uh, start moving those guys out of the way and let Burgess and Kraft do the rest. Run some clock, man, protect this lead. See those front five guys up front? That's where you start challenging them, telling, hey, if we're gonna win this game, it's gonna be on the backs of you dudes. So we're gonna start handing this one off. It looks like they got Kraft in the backfield now, but start grinding out a little clock if you're Carroll College. And Kraft got a little running room and works his way up over the 40 to the 45 and should have enough for the first down. So Duncan Kraft, the young man out of Billing Central High School, with some good hard running. Does the smart thing too. He stays in bounds, keeps the clock rolling, shrinks the game a little bit. And we're just gonna go take everybody over to the offensive right side now. First down carry to the 45. No hurry, no, no hurry at all. Doing a great job using the play clock. Something I don't have a lot of patience here. <laughs> Kraft again falls forward for a couple. Well, his former team, Billing Central, closed out the regular season last night at Hurt Plant Field with a convincing win over Harden. So the Rams roll into the playoffs as a one-loss team. I tell you what, of all the classes, Bobby, I, I wonder if Class A isn't the class this year because you've got Polson, Hamilton, Columbia Falls out of the west. You've got Lewistown Central. Laurel. Uh, Laurel is still there. I mean, the... Race for the state A championship is going to be good this year. Well, in Class A, they've got 12 teams going into the playoffs. So, I mean, it's almost an all-comers track meet right now. But you, you named off the top talent on both sides of the state in Class A. And, I mean, like you said, I, I like the, the team in Lewistown. Fergus, yeah. Fergus, they've got great athletes up there. They've had some great lines. But now they've got some of that perimeter athletic ability to complement their size up front. And, uh, you know, they're a tough team. They, they handled... Uh, Central at home and, and, you know, the western side of the state, no disrespect to them. But, uh, you know, you're going to have to probably play a team that's built a little bit different than you're seeing at the, at the Class A level. Uh, you know, never never rule out Hamilton. Uh, right. Always there at the end of the season. They did a great so. job last year in the state championship game yeah. at Laurel. Third and four now from the 49. Under 12 to play here in the fourth. Perka goes out here. He's got a wide open Collins right at the first down marker and from the spot he'll get it so yeah. that's a tight end that knows right where the first down marker is and collins They're separating some people there on the sideline and collins does a great job number one securing the catch and then are we going to keep the clock rolling here they're going to rule him out of bounds they're going to mark it for oh. a first down it looks like or right at it and the white hat says to move, but nobody's moving. There we <laughs> there, go. There we go. Okay, so it's right at the first down marker at the 45, so a fresh set of downs. And again, just smart football chewing the button. clock. Yeah, running the ball, running the ball, then just a safe pass to the tight end. Perkin now on first down, feels pressure, now throws it up for grabs. Flag on the play. This will be an interesting. Both guys it had is. a lot of hands going on right there, as we see. Intended for McCulchin, who's been kind of quiet here in the second half. Had a nice first half. So that's pass interference. It's Shamar Whetstone, the six foot, 235 pound DB out of Duarte, California. They get called for holding there on the sideline. And that gives them another first down deeper into this rocky territory. Carroll in the driver's seat right now, knowing what to do with a lead. Well, Rocky came in as the top defensive unit overall in the Frontier Conference and really exposed here in the second half. This game was scoreless late into the second quarter. Yeah, five minutes left yeah. in the second quarter. There was no score. There was no score, and the Saints picked up two. I think they're going to mark them back now. Maybe not. Nope. They're going to give it to him, the gain to the 30. Yeah, he just landed on top of the defender who's still down right now. They're going to stop the clock here to tend to his injuries. So he rolled up on, on the right side Josiah right there. Josiah Thompson, I think, was at the bottom of that. And also... That was Prince Johnson. Prince Johnson. He had him back there for a minimal gain, but Kraft with <laughs> shows a little bit of intestinal fortitude. Knew that he wasn't down and just got back up and kept running. 
Smart play by that young man and stays in bounds. As we watch Prince Johnson walk off the field here, trying to walk it off, so to speak. A little woozy coming off the field, so the gain is six, second and four. Ball at the 29. All Carroll here in the second half as they look to go to five and two. And again, big weekend in the Frontier Conference. Don't forget, immediately after this game, it's Montana Western in the College of Idaho. Down Dillon. Yeah, the Yotes are six and zero, oh, ranked in the top 10 in the latest NAI top 25 poll. What an addition that program has been to the Frontier Conference, Bobby. Yeah, started from nothing and, and they rose to power quickly in the NAI ranks. Coach Mike did a great job. He was at Cal Davis for a long time and did a great job down there, but you know, they've become increasingly relevant nationally and in, in a great, like you said, a great addition there as we watch another Carroll College run play to the edge and the running back very, coach very well to get down in bounds. Brusvin with the tackle, Duncan on the carry, brings up third down. And College of Idaho has been living dangerously the past couple weeks, you know, eking out close victory, close victory. And, you know, you, you, it's going to be real interesting as we go down to the wire here, what the end of the season looks like here in the front here. And this one into the back of the end zone, incomplete. Taking a shot. Sails out of bounds as they do take a shot for the score, but... Good coverage back there, and that Bears secondary brings up fourth down. Under 10 to play now here in the fourth quarter. You know, Carroll College going you know, to try go? to keep it going sure. here. Well, they've, they've been able to move the ball effectively, and, uh, you know, if, if they do what they've been doing, they just look for that tight end. Well, they got Tony Collins in on the right side right there. Yeah. Harrison, right there. Rothy, Ockelchin, they look that way. Check Plenty down of time. right there, there we go. Kraft. Kraft comes out of the backfield. First down gain inside the 20 yard line and a first down. Yeah, he does a great job just sneaking up in there. Nobody extra is coming. Everybody else handled the blocks. He just checks down over the front of the ball and that's an easy read for your quarterback. Just give me the ball. Hits him a little high, but not high enough, not too high. He climbed the ladder, catches the ball. First down, Carroll, deep in rocky territory. Fresh set of downs as we wind down to 9.30 here in the fourth. And now they'll shift the tight ends over to the left side. Choa and Collins. And run back the other way and Short gain on the play. Yeah, really nice defense. job defensively by McCafferty, who gets the tackle. We've called his name a couple of times today. Good, that guy is effective tackling the football, especially between the tackles. He he does bring the helmet pretty uh, pretty effectively. He's done a nice job for this Rocky defense, especially versus the run. But Carroll, not that. I'd be surprised if they put it through the air for any other reason than to just pick up a first down right here. Second and eight from the 15. Burgess back in the lineup. He gets the call. Straight ahead running, and he is very close to the first down, and we'll see where they mark it. Might be about a half yard short. A good effort by Burgess as he refused to go down and gets the extra yardage. This Carroll College offense answering the call right now just with a grinded out you know, run heavy possession right here. And the fresh legs getting a little bit of a rest on the sideline right there. Matt Burgess, you know, spelling Duncan Kraft and coming in and being effective, running through some tackles and carrying some defenders on his way here to third and short for this Carroll College offense. Big package on the O-line there and Burgess is gonna be met right at the line of scrimmage. And he appears to be short. Well, it's always kind of been an interesting outcome of these measurements here. We don't really know how it ends until we get the signal from the white hat. And it looks like the field goal unit will come on as we'll try to tack on three more here with 7.40 to play nope. in the fourth. Oh, clock running. Oh, decision made at the 20 by the head coach. They're going to try to get it done. People, you know, co-crab coming off. Yeah, 
The big man, number 70 in on the O-line, Andrew Devine, 6'8", 280 pounds. He came rumbling in the last oh, play. Oh, boy. They, they brought in defensive lineman number 95, 94, Garrett Kocab. And a little bit of indecision on Carroll's part, quick change. <laughs> First time out taken for Rocky. Yeah, I don't think anybody knew what they were going to do. They, they trotted the field goal unit on, then pulled them off. Offense went back on. Rocky calls a timeout. Berger comes off the field. Well, they had half the, punt, the the field goal team on and then half of it off. It sounded like they. It sounded like it was my kids trying to make a decision on where to go to dinner. <laughs> we couldn't figure out what was going on, and so we had people going every which way. And finally, somebody said, hold on for just a second. So cooler heads prevailed, and now we, now we know where we're going. We're all headed in the right direction. I'll tell you what, big old number 70 jogged onto the field. That's a big human. That is a, that is a, yes, that's a big man. Well, you look at the size of the O-line. I mean, not just. He's ducking down, line. too. He's not at his full height. He's, He's not fully They're stretched. asking him not to stand out right there. They're, you know, hunker down just a little bit so you can hear me down here. Fourth and inches. Ball's on the eight-yard line here in the fourth quarter. Out of the eye, Perka under center. And Burgess has the first down. Are they running it in? Not just two. enough, yep. More important for the Saints, clock continues to roll. Shorten the game a little bit right here. They sure have in this second half. Let's go down and check in with Austin Parr on the sidelines. Yeah, you guys started to mention it. One of the things that never gets mentioned enough is the offensive line. Number 78, Andrew Carter, leads the way for the Carroll College Fighting Saints. They've gotten a lot of push in this second half. You've seen how much clock they've taken off in this second half, but they never get enough uh, enough credit for this uh, the success of this offense. Well, no question. Uh, they have taken this game over since uh, late in the second quarter and completely controlled the line of scrimmage here in the second half against a very good Rocky Mountain College defense. Yeah, their defensive line is really the strength up front that forces a lot of the, the errant throws by other quarterbacks. But today, Carroll College's offensive line getting good push, just not enough there as they turn the ball over on downs. So, oh, Nobach throws an interception. Yeah, right. And it goes right back to Carroll College. Great job there by, I think that was Resch, the that linebacker. Was who was right there, and he yep. just throws it right to him. Resch is in better position to make the play than Killian was, and Resch knows what to do with it. That's a that's a turnover deep in territory, in, in Carroll territory right there. Hockey territory, rather. The young quarterback made, making that fail error right there. And, that's a tough one right there. You watch kids kind of come of age a little bit in a positive way. That's one of those negative deals you hate to see happen. But that Carroll defense today has been very, very, very stingy. And right there, another takeaway deep in territory. Saints right Carroll back College. on offense from the 10, first down. Uh, Burgess stood up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Well, I thought that the Saints had gotten the first down, but apparently Burgess was short, but then they get the ball right back on the interception. So we're far away from that angle. And we, the guy on the far side of the field from us looked like he was across the first down yardage and the other guy came hustling in at the end. We just weren't able to see the mark, but it doesn't matter now because Carroll College has got the ball back. Uh, both tight ends Second in the game. Down, yeah, gave him a yard on the play. Second down. They shift Collins over. Burgess behind Perka. And he goes up over the right side to the six. So gain of three for Burgess. Boy, he's been a workhorse today, hasn't he? Yeah, he got a little bit of a spill on that last drive, and, and we saw Kraft being effective. And, you know, both backs, as we see Burgess coming off, Kraft coming on this two back system, very effective. But, you know, the driving force in front of those backs, you know, especially, well, like you said, five minutes to go in the first half, there was 0 0. And then this Carroll offensive line just, you know, they put it on their backs. And those guys have, have really carried this offense quite well. 
the rest of the way. Third and goal from the six. Saints trying to tack on one more. Perker rolls right, fires Collins. Short of the goal line, and now a late flag late comes flag in. There. You know, you don't see a lot of loose guys running free in the back, offensive backfield. Carroll's offensive line does a nice job picking up, you know, guys wearing the opposite color and, you know, running their feet. Not dragging people down, using things the wrong way. Not a lot of penalties today, Chris, which is kind of nice. There's decisions and discussion being made right now over those, one of those penalties, one of the few. Yeah, what well, came after the play, so it was after the catch by Collins. And we'll get the call here. There is no foul on the play. Passing the Bears. Ball for nothing. Yeah, pick it up. So that's going to bring Berger in for the field goal. Now there is no indecision on this one. No half team in, half team out. This one with conviction. Berger stays on path to make a, this one is an extra point from Angle. So. Berger was four for four in field goals coming into this game. And now a chance to tack on three more. Harrison to hold. And this one is up and good. So Spencer Berger Gives the Saints three more, 24 to nothing now in the fourth. And boy, if you'd have told me that Rocky would be shut out of this game this afternoon with as good offense as they had, I'd, I'd have been very surprised. Got to take that bet too, Chris. Uh, we've watched them kind of, you know, early on there were spurts and hints that they, they could take this thing over with their offense. We saw them hit uh, their, their tight end, uh, Simon, down the seam. We saw Zaire Wilcox being used very effectively, intermittently in the run game, just not ever able to finish a drive. And, you know, with that unsuccess, you know, throughout the first half, that allowed Carroll to stay in it, stay in it, and build on something. They had a couple of big plays with their tight ends, and, you know, they found a little something up front with some confidence that's allowed them to take over this game. Well, you mentioned the lack of penalties uh, in the game, and it has been a well-played game considering the yeah. conditions and and uh, a lot of discipline uh, with this uh, Carroll College unit. Coach Purcell uh, really coming into his own, you know, after so many years at the high school level and with that college experience and now here to Carroll College, trying to restore uh, the tradition that Carroll has had for so many years. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about Mike Van Dies, but before that, Bob, old Bob Petrino, uh, you know, he had a very storied career here. And so, uh, you know, Troy Purcell, you know, taking over the reins and, and understands the pressures and then, you know, understands the climate of this, this uh, the, and the expectations that go along with the job and doing a nice job. Did a great job today getting this team ready. Now uh, you mentioned uh, Coach Petrino back in the 80s. Was there anything more frustrating than trying to stop a Carroll offense that was coached by the man and trying to stop that running offense that he had up here? Well, you know, Coach Petrino was famous for a lot of things. The option was one of them. <laughs> Smoking during games yeah. was another. You know, his fiery temper was only met by the match at the end of his arm, lighting up another cigarette. He would storm the sidelines, and those kids, you know, just incensed. He's got a, oh, as we see, another deep shot. He's got a, uh, a, a former player of his going into the Montana Pro Football Hall of Fame, yeah. Dan Rambo, who was you know, he, you know, I worked with Dan when I worked in Denver, and Dan was one, you know, he, we were on the same staff together, and then Dan is up in Canada right now, and he, he's made a great name for himself outside of football in the personnel aspect of it, and, and he's going into the Hall of Fame as a Carroll Co former Carroll College fighting saint, and, uh, you know, he, he had a uh, couple, a uh, cup of water at, at the NFL and other professional leagues, so he's going to go into that next year representing, uh, Bob Petrino and some of the historical teams that those guys had. So congratulations to, I just called him Bo, but, uh, or Rambo, but uh, Rambo took a different connotation on later in the 80s. 
Oh, there's a good, you know, there's a, there's a good Montana connection in my alma mater back there in Central Michigan in Mount Pleasant. You got Coach McElwain, the head yep. coach, who hired Paul Petrino as the offensive coordinator this year. I worked with Coach Mack at, at Montana State. He was the offensive coordinator, and uh, we had a lot of fun at Montana State. Coach Heisel, as he was winding her down, and uh, Coach Mack, one of the great offensive minds out of the state of Montana. His dad was a legend over there in Missoula. Coach Mack coached at Eastern Washington. Of course, he played there too. Nobach again, flushed out of the pocket, incomplete, fourth down. So yeah, the Chippewas, right? Fire up chips. Yep, there, there you, you go. go. <laughs> Got that Montana connection there. <laughs> uh, Coach McElwain's a great one. He's, it, it's great because his personality off the field is always, you know, kind of ho-hum. Oh yeah, there you go, Beersy, blah, blah, blah. Then when he gets on the field, he's red faced, stomping around, screaming at everybody. It, you know, we talk about flipping the switch. There's a dude that can flip the switch right there. <laughs> Jim McElwain's one of the great ones. You know, Montana product over there out of Missoula Sentinel. Well, it's amazing. Uh, we had the Montana Pro Football Hall of Fame banquet last summer in Billings, and and uh, it's incredible when you look at, you think, well, we're going to run out of people to induct into the Hall of Fame, and the list just gets longer and longer and longer and longer, and you don't realize how many people are connected or from Montana that have either played in the NFL or are connected to the NFL. And yeah. we, had a, we had a tremendous ceremony uh, back in June, and another class that was announced in September that's coming in. Seven more go in this year, so it's been a neat deal. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's not just Montana, Montana State guys, you know, guys that went to school from outside of sure. the state, uh, but they originated here, played football here. There, there's a bunch of guys. I got four or five guys that should already be in there that are, uh, you know, well deserving of, of being, you know, on that list and ready to roll as we see some good hard run right there. That there. was uh, Baxter Tuggle, the backup running back who's getting some playing time. Yeah, but that offensive line just continues. I mean, this is one of the great things about playing football on a, on a natural grass field. As you can see, your offensive line, they, they can measure their success by how dirty they are. And those dudes up front, their pants are filthy. They're, you know, white tape jobs around their ankle, filthy. And, you know, you're, you're going to have to throw an extra Tide Pod and some bleach in the wash this week just to get out this fall weather out of your shorts. All right, so first down. And the Saints just trying to run out the string here, leading 24 to nothing. Let's go down to the sidelines with Austin Park. I just want to give you guys a little insider secret at the Carroll College practice. The secret to being a successful offensive Carroll College lineman, gloves, not washing them either. The smell of the gloves. You ask some of these defensive players, when they're going against these O-linemen, they have the nastiest, smelliest gloves on the planet, and it honestly allows them to kind of, you know, brush away their defenders, and it's obviously been working today. So just a little insider secret for you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Austin. Wasn't that the name of a uh, Spinal Tap album? Smell the glove. I, <laughs> yeah. I can't. I can't touch that one. I, <laughs> well, <laughs> I have no idea on the Spinal Tap reference, <laughs> but well, I will. I will say uh, that uh, <laughs> Chris is probably correct with, with, with that uh, <laughs> that guess, that educated guess. But re regardless, stinky hands are evidently pretty effective up front today. <laughs> Uh, as th that offensive line is making sure that they get good push and, and finish in this game, as much as they took it over late in that second quarter. Yeah. <laughs> Carroll offensive line <laughs> turning that intensity up to an 11 today. There we go. Another final tap reference for our <laughs> folks at home. <laughs> but it only goes to 10. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, this happens in a 24 to nothing game, right? So, well, hey, I will say that the shout out to the Breakfast Club. That's a little bit more my generation, but that place, the Breakfast Club in Missoula and in Helena, their breakfast burritos are legit. Uh, I mean, if I lived in Helena or Missoula, it went, every time I visit Missoula, they've got gluten-free options for me, uh, the guys who can't eat anything, bread or anything like that, the no fun zone, as my kids like to call it when I take them with it. But the Breakfast Club done a heck of a job feeding not only our staff here, but families for breakfast. You call them up. They'll have it ready in you know, 15, 20 minutes, go down, grab a hot breakfast burrito, and hit the road, baby. It's, it's a great way to start any day of the week, and especially a weekend. 
Well, I know our guys on the crew were enjoying a little bit of that when we rolled into to, uh, the stadium at 11.30 this morning after the trip up from Billings. And yeah, I hadn't seen anything attack that viciously for a while. It was a, yeah, it was uh, some carnage going on. <laughs> there was not a lot of conversation, a lot of grunts and pointing. And well, that, I got the hint. Hey, our guys do a great job, and thanks for all the hard work today, bearing the elements. Austin Parr stepping up in the rain and the cold down on the sidelines for us today. And it's going to be a happy bunch at Carroll College today. They put themselves right back into play now when they get this win today. Wholesale substitutions now. And a big fella. That's a backup tight end, Ryan Rickman, getting his first catch. Going a little deep right there as Rickman able to get the screen pass. And Perk is still in there holding on to the last minute, but we got Laundry on the field. There's a smile down there by Coach Purcell, enjoying that a little bit. All right, so that'll all come back. So Carroll gets the win, Rocky the loss. Both teams now 5-2, and two, and if the College of Idaho uh, gets upended by Western. Montana Western, then you really got everybody back in play here with three weeks remaining in the regular season. And again, that game follows immediately after this one. Yeah, it, it's going to be a real interesting run to the finish here. College of Idaho, as I said, has played close games all season. has found a way to win when it's mattered. And so immediately following this one today, it'll be interesting to see how that one comes out. Hopefully I've got the uh, DVR on record here. As the Carroll run game continues to be effective, but you know this wholesale substitution does have its drawbacks. By you know, we got some, we've got uh, laundry on the field again, two plays in a row. We we talk too soon. We do this all the time, you and I. We talk about something that no hasn't happened very it. much, and then sure enough, it happens a lot. Don't talk about snow on the way home, Chris. Don't know. Uh. Uh. We're expecting a little bit of that white stuff maybe a little Not, later tonight. Good listening, Chris. Good listening. You're in the back seat. <laughs> so second play comes back after a nice gain and at the 44-yard line. And I think at this point, both teams are just it's pretty much ready to run the here. clock out and, and get on out of here. And Rocky will have to regroup. They've got, uh, what, Northern on the horizon next week up in Haver. Yes, yes, they do. A lot do. of teams have gotten healthy against Northern, but I'll tell you what, Jerome Sowers, veteran coach from Northern Arizona that's taken over that program, he'll get it turned around. Got to give him some time. It's not going to be It's going to take thing. time. We talked about that a couple weeks ago during the broadcast. We had a lot of time to do that. But, you know, anytime you get Northern on your schedule, there's a lot of time to develop some depth. Mm -hmm. And Rocky needs, you know, they have questions at quarterback now again. You know, we talked about Nathan Dick not being healthy and, uh, you know, trying to see what, what his status is going forward. George Tribble struggled a little bit today in the elements. And, you know, this this wet surface, wet, sloppy field right there, we saw that the effect that that had on everybody, and Carroll adjusted better than uh, Rocky did today. So, Yeah, and I, you know, you, Eastern Oregon, not a typical year for the Mountaineers. They were down, but typically they're pretty good. And, yeah, I think if if uh, Coach Sowers can turn things around uh, with the lights up there in Haver, that only spells good news for the conference. Uh, you exactly. want it to be strong. A new team coming in and, and the possibility of other teams coming in. And as you mentioned, can't talk about it but uh, because nothing's for sure. But we can tell you that uh, Arizona Christian will come into the league. And they were ranked this week. Arizona, oh, they were. Arizona Christian was ranked this week. Maybe it was receiving votes, but I believe that they were 25 in the country. And so they're not recruiting everybody to come in. They're recruiting some power teams uh, out west here to, to join the Frontier. And I think that's a, a statement to the brand that the Frontier Conference has at the NAI level. So the Bears will run a couple of plays and uh, get out of Helena with the loss as they'll go to five and two. Yeah, just just regroup, try to get back on the winning side of things. Coach Stutz been up against tougher challenges. He's got a good team down there in Billings. Just ran up against a team that was ready to go today in, in, in whatever that Mother Nature had to throw at him. You know, this Carroll team, it, it, they play so hard and, and the great size 
good athleticism. I mean, there's a lot to be impressed with uh, when you watch this group in person, and, and uh, they're not done. No, At 5-2, they, they are far from being done, and so uh, things will get interesting here in the final month of the regular season as we get inch closer to the NAI playoffs. And as you mentioned early, uh, Bobby, uh, automatic bid, of course, for the winner, and then possible an at-large, we don't know. And that will be it for this one as the Saints take down the Bears 24 to nothing final score. And uh, final thoughts, Bobby, on this one from you. I'll tell you what, it, at the beginning, we didn't know which way this was going to go, but Carroll figured it out, the weather, the elements, and put it together. It's tough to win in the frontier. Uh, on the road, Rocky found that out today. Carroll defended well at home, though. Kudos to them. Hats off to the Fighting Saints here in Helena. All right, don't forget, stay tuned. More football on SWX as the College of Idaho travels to Dillon to take on Montana Western. Here, it's all Carroll College. After a scoreless game midway through the second, Carroll comes up with two touchdowns to end the second quarter. They tack on 10 more in the second half, and the defense absolutely shutting Rocky down to get the win as they go to five and two. That's gonna do it from all of us here in the capital city on the campus of Carroll College. Thanks so much for watching. For Austin Parr on the sidelines and lots of help from Bobby Beers, I'm Chris Byers saying so long from Helena. Rentals, serving Helena since 1959, offers rental items for the do-it-yourselfer to major construction companies. Backhoes, floor care, lawn equipment, automotive, concrete work, generators, heaters, electrical, drywall, and more. We can help with any job, no matter how big or small. And don't forget about our party rentals and retail store at Parties Plus. Planning an event? We can help. From tents to catering to decorations. A1 Rentals and Parties Plus on Cedar Street in Helena.